I'm having a nervous breakdown, and uh, I'm, I'm all about to file for bankruptcy, and I have all kinds of people I hired to help me out. So Okay, in today's video, I'm going to basically just be calling people, seeing if they want to talk about anything. That's at least going to be the plan. We'll see how this goes. So I'm not leaving voicemails. Because, yeah, if you paid attention to yesterday's video, I didn't want to leave voicemails. So. I don't ever know if me doing it on my line does anything, but oh well. Welcome to the message center. Fun stuff, dude. It's like knocking doors, if you've ever done that. Hey, good morning. Is this Brian by any chance? It is. Hey, Brian. So my name's Caleb, and I was just reaching out to agents to see if you guys have ever considered doing mindset coaching or hiring a mindset coach. I was talking to somebody the other day, and he said it helped him grow his business a lot. So I want to see if that would... Your, 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 your energy. We're putting, putting the landing gear down. So that would be nice. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he said landing gear. I think homeboy was in a plane. That's pretty chill. He did say he liked my energy, though. So we'll take that. I don't understand why people are afraid of doing this. I mean, I was afraid yesterday, but like, then you get the ball rolling. And I can always make minor improvements as I go, but the only way to really know is to start. At least that's how I've always learned and done what I do, is through the constant, like, repetition. Hi, this is Mandy with my of showing up every single day. And I just want to let you know as well, too, that it's not that hard to make calls. So if you're a sales guy, and you're like, I don't want to pick up the phone. It's like, I just pick up the phone and we just kind of make our way, way forward from there. You're almost at 10 calls. And I can always improve the pitch and things like that, but I'm just, I'm testing it, seeing who bites. It's like casting a line out into the ocean. You don't know what fish you're going to catch, but you might as well have as many lines out there as you possibly can. Um, on to the next. It's funny too, how compared to yesterday, dude, it was like, probably the hardest thing that I had to do and then today it's just like boom 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 because that's how it works once you get the ball rolling it's a lot easier to keep it moving and I'm just also under the impression that it's better to reach out to as many people as you possibly can because sales at the end of the day is a numbers game and if you can get people to answer which is the weird part too like if I was in this industry and I had somebody calling I would be picking up every single phone call regardless of what it was because because at that point in time, it's like, if you aren't picking up your phone, then you're just leaving money on the table, which I've realized that a lot of salespeople do that, where they won't pick up the phone. Yep. Okay, I'll text homeboy as well, too. Um, see, at least he texts. Like, that's always a good way to do that, but I'll text him here in a second. Um, I want to finish the calls first and see how many calls we can bang through today. Because yesterday we banged through a good amount. But I was also nervous yesterday, so every day is a new day, man. Every day is a new day. You give yourself some time to reflect and sit on it and think about it, and then it's just like you come back like even stronger, even more capable, even more willing to do what you need to do because you already know what it takes at that point in time. So we're just going to keep going. Goal is 50 in 30 minutes. We'll see if we can get that done. If it's all voicemails, then we will be able to. Hi, this is Jackie. Fun stuff. Like, dude, I just don't understand. Because, like, I'm in this industry. Or hypothetically, I'm in this industry. So clearly, I would want to be able to make as like much money as I possibly could. And every single time the phone rings, it could potentially be a prospecting. Be like, could be saying spam or, like, potential spam or something like that. But it's like, I'd still call that person back. Because sometimes, like, numbers will pop up. And, like, there's all these different filters that are in place on the phones that don't really know. This is Shana with Boss so I don't even know where we're at right now, but I'm just under the impression, regardless of who it is, like I've got one, I've had one text back so far, which to me, that's just is very strange how it's only like one at this point out of, I think probably 10 that have actually texted me saying something. If you hear, I'm doing laundry right now. If you hear something in the background, but this is what I feel like. This is what made me successful and makes me successful is I do the dials one after another because I was reading something on Reddit the other day as well, too. Hi, you reached Joe Silky. Oh, and how many people are actually going to call me back is the question. 
That is the question. But I was listening to something on Reddit the other day, or reading something on Reddit the other day, where, <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> Some agent said, Hello everyone, this is Steve. Son. Said they don't like making cold calls. <clears throat> yeah, I'll shoot you. Okay, so we got another text from Steve. So I've, I have two texts at least right now, which is solid. There might be an automated one, which is chill, but at least there's something. This Thank was... you for calling Coldwell Banker Realty. Please press one to speak with one of our staff members. I'll press one. <clears throat> I don't know what's gonna happen from this, but it's Loy trying to get in contact with Loy. Can I address your call? Um, Loy Hall, please. Hold on one, one second, please. Thank you. You're welcome. See, dude, and it's this easy, bro. Like, you just ask, and then you just, you get there. Like, it's, it's incredible. Okay. So I just don't understand why more salespeople don't just pick up the phone. And like I was saying with the Reddit thing, is like one of the dudes is like, I'm terrified of making cold calls. But one of the agents in the industry was just making cold calls one after another after another. And he was making like millions of dollars a year. So let's see if we can get somebody. May or may not be able to, and if we do, awesome. If not, no worries. Hi, you've reached Lloyd Hall with Cole. Yeah, see, and I'm still not leaving voicemails, dude. It's just crazy to me. I, like, I get that maybe they're like with prospects or something like that. But it still just baffles me. And that's where the post where I'm gonna get this thought finished, I promise. The thought was like, I'm terrified to make sales like cold calls. And I'm just like, well, what's the fear? You stay at the same place if you don't make the call versus if you do make the call. Like, if you make the call and you get somebody on, you potentially have a yes. Which, to me, that just makes, like, sense. Just go out and try. Like, you don't know what's going to hit versus what's not going to hit. And I'm doing these videos every day, too, so if you want to... So if you want to subscribe to the channel to never miss out another on another one of these videos, you can do that. And I wish that there was a way, if any of you know how to like automatically have calls turn on speaker versus like going through like the thing, would highly recommend. Hi, this is Kelly Lamphere. Thank you so much. Be great to, if you let me know how to do that. And I always can change the pitch as well too, but like we got to get somebody on the line first, bro. It's like fishing, if you think about it. You're trying to figure out what bait sticks and which one doesn't. And the more calls you make, the higher the likelihood you have of somebody picking up. And you'll see all these other videos online of all these other people that like just get call after call after call. And I'm not saying that that's not possible, but a lot of this is like, it's this, it's just making the calls one after another, after another, after another. Hi, you've reached Alex at Brightside Group. Um, and we're just like, if you think about this, like look at how many calls I'm making within this allotted time. Like we're at 10 minutes right now and I'm 15 calls in. I mean, I haven't had any conversations, but it's just like just one after another after another. And you don't get discouraged because like I said, I'm at the exact same place that I was if I didn't pick up this call in the first place. But if you have the ability to make cold calls or pick up the phone, it's like a money printing machine that's completely free and takes no time out of your day whatsoever. And if you're willing to just like sit here for a minute waiting for the phone to ring, something's bound to, bound to happen. Hi, this is Belinda Cox with I'm just I'm still just baffled, dude, that like because this could also be showing me that like there's systems that can be put up in place. Which I could always do something along those lines, like along with the coaching and be like, hey, I called all these different Hi, this is Taylor. Hi, Sailor uh Taylor, sorry about that. This is Caleb. I was just reaching out because like I help realtors with their mindset and their business. I don't know if that was something you'd be interested in learning a little bit more about at all or not. Okay, but thank you for reaching out. Yeah. I do appreciate that. Yeah, I do have one other question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, how can I help? So I've called up a couple of different realtors, and I've just been kind of, like, baffled with how most of them don't even pick up the phone when it's, like, that could be a potential buyer or seller on the other side. I didn't know how you, like, if you manage that in a different way to be able to pick up the phone versus, like, not picking up the phone. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that's a great question. That drives me crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have a good answer for you. Because I'm like, you, it's literally somebody trying to give you money into their pocket right now, and they aren't even picking up the phone. I'm like, that just kind of seems, it it just doesn't make sense to me. I've had two other people like text me, which has been great, but it sounds like you, yeah. this is probably why I have a feeling you're probably one of the top realtors at the company. Vail, I find that any Vail realtors, they never answer their phone. I always have to text them. Like they just, I find that most of the realtors up here in the mountain towns that they don't need to work they're part-time or like trust funders. So I don't find, uh, there's like a core group of us that actually work full time, but I find most are pretty part-time. So that's probably my, <laughs> my way I look at it or I think about it. Is that due to the commission being so high on those like realtor like homes out there? Um, I mean, they're still, they're, they're pretty comparable to probably whatever, um, you know, you're, between that like two and a half and three percent it's still what i see it's pretty average yeah it's just i'm i guess i'm just more referring to like the home price out there because it's like within like the two to three million or like even up to 14 oh, million yeah. or something like that yeah no definitely like two two to three right now is selling a lot more than the one million range um you know one million used to kind of be like what you needed to jump in but a lot of the properties around like the one range aren't selling as quickly so I'm seeing more around like the two to three million dollar houses. And so there are just not as many qualified buyers to do that. So um, maybe that's why you're not getting as many people answering. Which is, phone. is that the range that you're in within the two to five million? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, my team's up here in Frisco Main Street. Gotcha. And are you doing anything for your marketing to like get more potential buyers? Because I have a feeling that there's people maybe not in Colorado that do have those. Yeah, no, my uh, my brokerage, they actually, they put a lot into lead gen. So, you know, we're not really looking to get anything else, but um, I know I'm lucky I'm with a team. They pay to do that for me. So I'm not looking to add anything on myself yeah no i wasn't offering that to you at all i was just my perspective i'm like if the house got built and there's money out there then on the flip side of that coin there's somebody out there that's looking for that house it's just trying to find them in the right place or get them to the right like area so that they can actually buy that house in the first place yeah yeah i know they do a lot of lead gen through zillow and, and uh, capturing people who are driving through so um yeah that's kind of uh, but we, how we do things of course and you like how things are working out for you like you haven't run into any like major problems or anything like that that you are aware of nope i'm i am happy where i am awesome taylor well i don't want to i i could keep asking you hundreds of questions i ha i'm always so curious about this industry and what you guys do to make success but i'll let you get back to it in case you have other people that you're wanting to call up on or anything like that because i noticed some other realtors don't even like making calls to some of the prospects which to me that also like just baffled my mind away too i'm like just pick up the phone and make dials, but not everybody's into that type of thing. So I yeah, completely that understand. Is true. <laughs> hey, yeah, unfortunately, I'm on a team that thinks differently, and we do <laughs> lots of cold calling. But um, but yeah, no, I do appreciate you giving me a call, and uh, good luck. I'd re I'd recommend yeah texting if you can't get other people on the phone. Yeah, I like the face to face stuff. Like texting and email is chill and all, but it's just like I don't get like there's a different dynamic between having a phone call and a conversation with somebody compared to just like a text or an email. I might send it over later or something like that, but I just, this is always my way of communicating. I feel like there's different energies and like you can just kind of like feel people out a little bit better on where they're at and kind of yeah. meet their needs a little mo more than just like, oh, I open this, I ignore it and I toss in the trash type of thing. So I like this yeah, for sure. a lot more. But yeah, I appreciate that, Taylor. And I hope you have a good rest of your day and hopefully you can yeah, get a deal too. closed down. Yeah, you should give me call down. if there's anything I could uh, ever help with up here in the mountains. Yeah, as soon as I get enough money, once I get a couple of clients, then I'll, you'll be the first one I reach out to because I'd love to have a home out in the mountains. That's, that's my goal. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. All right. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate your time. Keep, yeah. Keep you, at it. you too. Have a good one. Bye. So yeah, I could have done a little bit more on that one, but I'm just, I'm also just having conversations, dude, because a lot of the times people don't even want to have the conversations. Hi, I've reached Mike Kelly with... And I also found it very interesting how she's like, yeah, most realtors don't even pick up their phone, which I'm like, yeah, no, that is very, very interesting. But like the people that do pick up their phone, clearly that's why they are succeeding is because they're picking up their phone and they're having the conversation, even if it's not a conversation that they're expecting, but at least they can respond and respond and respond. And that's the key thing is you want to be able to just pick up the phone and have these conversations in the first place.
Hi, this is Aaron. Hi, Aaron. This is Caleb. I'm just reaching out to realtors today to see if they are interested in like any sort of mindset coaching or anything like that. Because I talked to one the other day and he said that was something he found of value. No, thanks. No worries. Thanks, Aaron. I do have one other question for you, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, he didn't hang up at first, so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and ask one other question because I wasn't gonna be the one that hung up on him. Um, so I'm actually gonna, because like, that's the other thing too, is like, how would you offer somebody to have like an automated text or something like that go out when people buy or call them? I don't know. I think that was the same place as the other lady that I talked with as well too. But like, how would you get, how would you get somebody on the line to tell them like, Hey, I have this thing for you that can help you out if you can't get them on the phone. It's like, you're just leaving business on the table and I get it. Like if you're part-time, like maybe that is what, Hi, you've reached Stacey Bouchard. maybe that's what a lot of these agents are. Yeah. See, there's, there's some people that are telling me it's okay to text. So I might, text as well too, but, um, there's just a different, like I said, dynamic versus calling and texting. Good morning, Liz Sotheby's. This is Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I was hoping to speak with Lark Stewart, if they're still working there. Yeah, she's still working with the office. She is not in right now, but I can transfer you to her cell phone. Um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be awesome. Just one moment. Thank you. So see, then there, like, you can always have like these types of things as well too, where it's more of like you have a secretary or a virtual assistant that's able to like answer your calls and either direct them over to you or something like that, so you aren't like missing out on certain types of business. Hi, you've reached Lark Stewart with Luke. See, and it's still like I get that like you could be in the middle of a showing, which is great if that's where you are. Hi, Eric. This is Caleb. I was just reaching out to see if you had ever considered like any sort of mindset coaching or anything like that to help you grow the business. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Eric. See, dude, it's really not that difficult. And I can always make adjustments and change this as well, too, but... Hello, you've reached Barrett Ramey with Weston. Oh, goody good. Goody, good, 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 good. Very good, very, very good. Very, 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 very. Hey, is this Steven? Hello? Hey, is this Steven? Yes, this is him. Awesome, Steven. So my name's Caleb. I was just reaching out to see like if you had ever thought about or if you have ever hired like a coach. I'm doing like a research project and I'm trying to figure out like if realtors find value in hiring like mindset coaches at all or not. Uh, I personally don't. I think it's kind of a waste of money. I mean, it's like, you're going to do your job or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> like, pretty, that's how I, I think, I don't, I don't see, you know, and I'm completely different, but I don't see people paying, you know, people paying five, ten grand a month with the, for a person to tell you to work. <laughs> I think it's pretty stupid. Yeah, it sounds like you're already pretty self-motivated yourself. Yeah, no, um, I have my business, I do 30 to 40 a year every year, so. Yeah, you're not the ideal, I guess, person that would be able to do this because, like, you already have that, and it's just, like, the people that need it the most are the people that aren't even picking up their phones. So I'm just, like, where, like, how does this, how does this work, per se? It's very strange to me. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I don't understand it. It's, I think it's really dumb. Well, it's, I had a guy that, I had a guy paying a guy 10 grand a month and he's our team lead, and he's not my team leader anymore. Let's say that. Uh, but he uh, he couldn't he couldn't pay for sure because he's paying that. And the guy was literally telling him the same freaking thing every week. Literally, <laughs> the same thing. And I'm like, bro, this is fucking pathetic. And you're paying ten grand a month for this? Yeah. It's pretty sad. But yeah, and I just don't understand that either. I'm just like, why would? 
But then, it, like, maybe he was telling them the same thing every week because that lead wasn't changing. Like, that would be my only, like, thing that I could think of at that point in time. I'm like, the dude just doesn't know how to do what he needs to do. Yeah, well, he, he was pretty good at listening to him and all that, I will say. Uh, but he was more worried about recruiting agents rather than actually doing production. And mm. that's what screwed him. And, um, you know, I just don't. Like, I think it's pretty sad that you have to pay someone to put you in a mindset to work or make money. And you know, when you're spending, like, you're telling me I have to do, you're paying them 10 grand a month. You have to do an extra deal a month just to pay for a coach. To me, that's stupid. So then what, what would what would you find value in paying 10 grand a month for then, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, fucking leads, ads, um, uh, I, I would pay for ads, and like so. I'm, I I I I I work with fix and flip. I do fix and flips as well as regular agents. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, like I've already paid two, three grand for um, a guy. He's running all this stuff, like email wise. And then once I get those targets and all that data back. Whoever we, whoever was engaged in the target, uh, we start producing Instagram, Facebook ads directed toward them to, you know, to find picture up or things like that. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that is way more, uh, you know, valuable. You can, yeah. Oh, wait, one hundred percent. You can make, you can do two deals a month wholesale and it makes forty, fifty grand a month. All right, so you can make twenty grand on a deal every single time. You know, or you can make a hundred grand on a deal. So like, to me, that's that's the best way to go about things, and or pay, or honestly, ten grand a month. Shit, I'll pay a fucking, I'll pay an assistant five grand a month to do everything for me. Like to me, those are the two two main things. Like if I had ten grand to put away, I would put five grand into ads and and lead gen, and five grand a month to an assistant that literally runs all your back end stuff for you. And then you are able to double your business, uh, you know, without having to do any of that stuff. Yeah, and with that lead gen as well too, like would you pay a service cost for like somebody to run the ads for you? Or is that something yeah, where it's just I, like... I do that already. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's like 500 bucks a month, but he said, you know, more ads, you know, more money, more ads. But like he has a guy running, I think, uh, I think he pays like 1500 a month to, to run ads. Facebook and Instagram, and he gets he does 15, 15 wholesale deals a month. Yeah, I mean that's a it pays for itself at that point in time. Then yeah, it's like coaching stupid. I, I think it's fine. Yeah, I've noticed a couple of those lead gen agencies as well, too, because I've talked with a couple of different realtors, and then some of them are like, yo, I want more leads, and then others are like, we have too many leads, and then other people are like, I need help coaching, and there's not professionalism in the industry. So it's like there's these two, like, fine lines, because apparently it only takes, like, 164 hours to get your real estate license or something like that, and people just don't understand, like, the intricacies, I guess, of the actual sales process, basically. Mm -hmm which is fascinating to me. But yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that with me, man. Um, the 10K, that's something for me to keep in mind because like, if you say like if it was $10,000 for a lead gen or something like that, and let's say one person is just like, okay, the service fee is 5,000 and you're spending 5,000 on ads. Is that a value to you or no? Uh, I would rather do that. Yeah. And like I, I, like I said, I pay, if I had 10 grand just sitting every month, so if I have 120 grand just sitting there ready to use, I would spend the half on Half on an assistant, half on that, half on the job. Okay, cause yeah, I'm I'm also under the impression too. So you'd rather hire somebody to do it than learn it yourself, then? Yes. Okay, okay, that's good to know. And then if do you want the would you want the leads to be qualified as well too? Like when they come in, like the lead gen agency is like vetting the people and be like, hey, is this an actual is this person actually qualified for the work that I'm looking to do? Oh, for sure. Awesome. That'd be preferred. Cool. My assistant was taking yeah. <laughs> yeah, those VAs, dude, like they save so much time and energy and everything like that. It's just. It's like you don't even need a VA. You can literally, I can just literally hire an actual assistant that I know, like a trust, and they can do all my backing stuff, all my, all my CRM, CRM all my touch points, um, all my marketing, everything like that. And you're paying them 60 grand a year to do that. Like. 
stay at home moms could do that all day. Yeah. Because all the back end stuff, so it's just the marketing, it's the CRM, it's the follow ups, I'm guessing as well. It's like the automation to be able to make sure that everybody's getting touched in the way that they need to. Yeah. Correct. And do you know, do you know, would you ever consider using AI as well to make something like that happen or uh, no? I, I'm like a nine year old when it comes to <laughs> electronics, so, um, and I'm only 30, but um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I would love AI to run this. I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. I mean, that's that's my whole thing. I'm like, they have whole like AI call automation things to be able to reach out and like to qualify leads, and it's crazy with what they can do nowadays. So I might have to reevaluate some of the research that I'm that I'm following up on right now and see what's more valuable to to you because like I just want to solve your problem in the best way that I possibly can. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, Stephen, I don't I don't want to take up more much more of your time. That's basically all the questions that I had off the top of my head that I can and had written down. So. I appreciate you sharing that with me. And if anything comes up AI based or something like that, I might circle back with you and see if that's something you might be interested in. Cool. Awesome. Well, Hey, I appreciate you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. So we got a couple of these out here. If you think about that four, six, I think we got like one more call. I'm going to do an hour of this today. So we're gonna have to stop the camera here in a second and start it up again. So you might only hear audio for a brief second because my camera taps out at about 30 minutes or so. Just what I had to do in yesterday's video. But with that being said. Hello, this is Tiffany Shook with Reno. So that's actually good to know as well too that, oops, that people are looking for AI stuff. And I, I didn't want to push back on that dude either because that's crazy. $10,000 a month for coaching. I'm learning a lot, dude. I'm learning a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. This is fun. I love it. We'll do an hour today. Let's see what we can get. And if you notice how I'm just having a conversation, like I'm just having these conversations with these people and you can be like, well, how am I supposed to make money? You make it by, like, eventually we'll... Eventually, we'll fine-tune the offer, but I'm going to pause this really quick. We're going to start it up again just so that we can keep going. I'm hoping that I'll be able to sync this up somehow with this. I don't know. We'll figure that out, but we're just going to be making calls. And you notice how when I get somebody on the line as well, too? Here, let's try and sync this back up. When I get somebody else on the line too, I'll try to ask other questions just to kind of like Hello, you've reached R squared real get as much insight and knowledge as I possibly can. Because from what I've learned, this is the best way, at least from my way of doing things. This is the best way for me to be able to be as efficient as I possibly can. Because I get to ask different questions and I get to inquire about different things. I'm gonna learn a lot. And then I also have the video so I can like look back and I can be like, okay, this is what worked, this isn't what worked. And I can just make those small little improvements each and every single time that I do things like this. So we're just testing it out, seeing what works. Please leave your message. And like you're noticing, at least I'm noticing this right now, like, and this is something that I could possibly change or offer of like, implementing something like with AI possibly into like their system to be like, okay, I want. This is Holly. Can I help you? Yeah. Holly. My name's Caleb. I'm doing like a research project and I'm trying to figure out like what realtors like problems are. Cause I've, I've thought about doing like mindset coaching and like lead gen. A couple of agents have talked about that. So I was just trying to figure out if there's any other like problems that you faced at all by any chance that like if it was removed, it would make your life 10 times easier. Um, that would be uh, something I need to put a little thought into. Uh, <laughs> I know I kind of called you right out of the uh, blue, which is, my, and I put you right on the spot. I was like, Hey Holly, do you have an answer for this? You're like, um, hold on, maybe not. So that that's on me right there. I, I have noticed though, like that a lot of realtors I have called don't pick up their phones. Clearly that's not you. So I'm like, clearly you're doing a lot better than 99% of all these other realtors are. So I'm like, I don't even know if you have problems at this point in time. 
Oh, there's always issues and problems. Um, shoot me an email, and um, I will try to get back to you with me. Both on. Yeah. Um, in, in the meantime, though, just I'll just ask you this. Have you ever hired a coach by any chance to, like, help you with, like, your mind or the business or sales or anything like that? Um, I do coaching through um, my managing broker. And is that with T Tom, I think, was what it was? Tom Ferry or something like that? Or is it a different coach? Uh, no, I mean, I've gone to I've gone to seminars with Tom Ferry. Um, I do. I've, I'm a ninja agent. Um I'm, I've done seminars with Brian Buffini, so um, I very try to stay in tuned with uh, professionals like that. Um, but one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have not, and I just uh, my uh, managing broker provides such good uh, direction, so I really haven't needed that right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I can tell that you because like you pick up the phone, so I mean, like clearly they're doing <laughs> something right. <laughs> Oh, yes, I, 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 that is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Communication is hard when you can't reach the other end. <laughs> it really is. And I'm like, it's people, like it could be a buyer or seller that's trying to give you their money and it's like people aren't picking up the phone. And I'm like, what? Like, it just, I don't understand it. I'm like, I always pick up the phone regardless of who calls. I think part of it right now is I get so many spam calls and I mean, I just had three right in front of you. I, I mean, I was almost like, uh, is this another this? one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, I mean, phone identifies, it says nonprofit, it says spam, it says telemarker, which is like, great. I actually don't answer those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I figure if it got in there by mistake, they would leave a voicemail call there. But maybe that could be part of it, that people are just so inundated. So you, but you listen to your voicemails then? Oh, absolutely. As soon as I get one. Yeah. Ah, okay. Because I've heard some people like my generation and a little bit younger too, and I'm not like, I'm in my mid twenties. We just don't listen. I listen to my voicemails, but I'm different than a lot of people in my generation. So it's just, it's cool seeing that people still do that because everybody's like, oh, don't leave voicemails. But you're saying like, yeah, that's a good way to know whether or not it's a spam call versus like a telemarketer or something like that then. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an old and so I grew up in sales and marketing and your voicemail was crucial. So that's just something that's ingrained in me. Um, but you're right, like my children, you're will not listen to their voicemails. <laughs> They're, Call they're... me back from my voice sales. <laughs> In fact, it says they're full 20% or 90% of the time. <laughs> so um, I don't know. <laughs> they're busy like scrolling um, TikTok and Instagram and getting texts and all these other notifications. And it's just like, I don't have time to listen to a voicemail. Well, they don't even pick up the phone. I have to text them with a message saying, Call me back right away. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what the answer is on. Yeah, I don't either. I thought maybe AI or something like that. Maybe that for helping people pick up the phone or like having them call back like, hey, so-and-so is busy. They'll give you a call back in five seconds or five minutes whenever they get a second. Just at least so there's that like interest to know that like, hey, I received your call, but I'm busy. Like I'll call you back in a moment or something like that. But I don't know if that's something that would help at all out at all or not. But like your generation, would you consider yourself a millennial or younger than a millennial? Millennial. Okay. Would you leave a message if you got that message from an AI? Or would you just be like, I'll either call back or I'll move on? I would call back. So I always call back okay. whenever I get phone calls. That's just my, like with me being in sales and marketing as well too. Like whenever I get a call, like I call back right away. Whereas I feel like a lot of people in sales or in real estate, they're like, they dread when the phone rings. And I'm just like, that doesn't Are, make sense. No, I mean like you... Um, looking for a service person or a vendor, mm -hmm. or if you were looking for an agent for yourself or buying or selling, would you leave a message if you got that response? Oh, so like I was, I guess I'm more referring to like, if I was like reaching out like via an ad or something like that, and I got a call and it was from an AI mm -hmm. of like, hey, I, I don't think I would leave a message at that point in time. But like, if I got a call from like, say I was reaching out to you or buyers were reaching out to you, and then at that point in time, it's like, then the AI would follow back up with that person, like with a call right away from a different number or a text from a different number and say X and X agent is busy at this moment. They'll call you back 
as soon as they get a free second or something like that. So it's more of mm-hmm. like just an acknowledgement, but I personally would because I'd be like, okay, at least this person's like reaching out. Like I've had a couple of different agents text me and I just haven't gotten back to the text because I'm like, I'd rather have the face-to-face call or at least like just a call because I believe that there's more personality within that compared to like a text or an email or something like that. So I would personally, yes. I don't know how many like, other people would though. I mean, my voicemail message says that. So if you got my voicemail, it would say, I'll call you back within, you know, a short period of time. So pretty much the same thing. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure that out myself too. I do have one other question for you, Holly, though, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. In regards to those seminars and like the, co- the group coaching and things like that, did you find value from doing that? Uh, the seminars? Yeah. Sure, I do. Yeah, I always do. I always learn something new no matter how long I've been doing something. There's, there's always something you get out of it. That's awesome because I've had some people too where they're like, why would I pay $2,000 to go see somebody talk? Or why would I pay five grand for a coach? Or why would I do this? And I'm just like, well, maybe that's why you are where you are. Not trying to like say that they aren't at a good place, but that's always just kind of like things that I kind of think about because I've, I've invested in myself and it seems like a lot of people don't want to invest in themselves nowadays, which I kind find kind of sad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's tough. It kind of depends on where you are in, in your life financially. So um, there's a lot that might play into that. True. Very true. Well, I appreciate you giving me the time, Holly. Um, and sure. I'm going to take some of this thought into consideration and see what I can come up with. And I mean, it sounds like you're already doing pretty well for yourself. It didn't seem like you had any major problems that arised. And I mean, I think you've already sold like quite a decent amount of homes this year and over the years. So it seems like you're doing pretty yeah. well for yourself. I am fortunate. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You put in the work, you know, you know what it takes. Whereas a lot of these other people seem like to think that they're just going to make a million dollars off that first like house or something like that. And then they realize that, oh, there's work involved and I don't want to do work. So I'm not going to do anything, which I don't get that, but to each their own, I suppose. Yeah. It's a very time consuming job and uh, you don't always get paid. So. <laughs> Hey, but when you do get paid, you get paid very well. So yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, it has to all uh, even out at the end of the year. Exactly. What you give out will come back and what you what you don't won't. So I, I was just like leaving people and giving a little bit, of, trying to brighten people's day up in the best way that I can. So I'll let you get back yeah. to it unless you got some words of wisdom for a sales guy like myself getting started, trying to find his way in this world. I don't know if you have any advice or suggestions on making deals a little bit more streamlined oh so are you just started as a real estate agent or so, so i'm an independent so like i'm starting up my own business like my that's where i'm doing like the research is like trying to figure out what it is that i can solve because i love solving mm-hmm. problems and it's mm-hmm. kind of tough trying to like get somebody say like i can bring the horse to the water but i can't make them drink and that's where i've i can see keep running into those types of things so i'm trying to figure out like what the thing is that I can give because I, I, I have the work ethic, I have the drive, I have the ability to talk. So I'm just trying to help out people in the best way that I know how to, which is solving problems that I myself have solved. So I'm also trying to figure out like, well, what are, what are real estate agents biggest problems? Because I love homes, I love people. So I'm just trying to like combine both of those together to create something out of thin air basically. Sure, sure. I mean, you reap what you sow so it takes time you it's like a farmer you have to plant your crop and tend to it and you know hope that you have a good harvest right and that that doesn't happen overnight so is there not hunting involved in it though as well too oh yeah absolutely but uh yeah it's just planting all those seeds of people who when they are ready they turn to you true yeah they it's Kind of living by example, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it, Ollie. Well, I'll let you get back to your day. I appreciate you giving me the 10 minutes of your time. I, I, I don't take sure. that lightly at all. I really do appreciate it. So you have a good rest of your rest of your day, and we'll talk soon if needed. Okay, sounds good. You as well. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. <clears throat> so yeah, dude, I mean, there's so many different problems, and you can be like, why aren't you closing these people? Why aren't you like asking for a meeting and like doing all this other stuff. And I'm like, it's because I'm just, I'm learning right now, dude. Like, and you can be like, that's an excuse. And it's just like, no, I'm also just having conversations. Like, this is what I love doing. Just having conversations, learning, asking questions, 
Because this is how you get good at sales, is you just have more and more conversations than you can relay these things. Like, I don't have a script, bro. Like, this is all off the top of my head. Which, to some of you might be like, that's crazy. But it's like, it's because I talk, I ask questions, I listen. I also share some stories, make statements Hi, as well, too. And, and like, I could be leaving voicemails, like I said, but that can be for another day and another time. I think this is the right one. Yeah, let's let me write that down. Hi, you've reached Rob Tom. Um, see, at least he gives me a text. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm not, I'm just not texting people right now because I'm just making phone calls. The text can come afterwards. I don't even know how many calls we're at right now. So I might not go through. You've reached Randall Crowley. Yeah, that one didn't go through. But I'm learning a lot from doing this. And then I can also start to change and make adjustments. So this is where I say, like, if you want to do something, just do it. Pick up the phone, have the conversation. There's nothing to be afraid of. Like a lot of people, and I know that this is later in the video, but I know that a lot of people will think that, oh, cold calling is so scary. People are going to tell me to screw off or whatever it is. It's like, have you seen anybody tell me to screw off at this point in time? Or has everybody been nice? Has everybody been kind? Has everybody been compassionate? And the reason for that is because the world's a reflection. And if you're nice, if you're kind, if you're compassionate, if you're loving, if you're caring, if you're joyful, it's going to be reflected back to you. That's just how this world works. That's how the existence that we live in functions. So as long as you are... And like, I don't have any fancy CRM. All I do is I, I have the call recorded so then I can go back. I can take notes. I can analyze. I can look over it. I can hopefully inspire you to do something. But like, you can just see like, this is how I have conversations. This is why I'm good at sales. This is why I do what I do is because I just like... Call field. Oh, it didn't work. Um, this is what I just love doing is talking to people in whatever way it may be. <clears throat> And plus, this gives you a little bit of insight into like, oh, this is who he is. This is how he talks. These are the things that he does. Oh, this is another. Good morning, Mrs. Jan. Good morning, Jan. This is Caleb. I'm doing a research um, study right now, and I'm trying to figure out like if realtors have uh, ever hired like personal coaches. <laughs> See, sometimes you get the people that will hang up, um, which is perfectly okay. And I don't really mind because then what do we do? We go on to the next one. It's about detaching from the scenario, detaching from the situation and realizing that it's nothing against you. Like, I mean, if you got a call, would you talk with the person or would you not talk with the person? I like talking with people. So like, I'll sometimes just talk just to talk. And if it's for me, cool. If not, like, no worries. You're not wasting anybody's time because you're... Hey there, it's Brittany Golden with LP. Because you're giving people something of value, regardless of what that may be. And you can be like, she got a couple of <clears throat> telemarketing calls beforehand too the number you dialed is not in service <laughs> it's like she got three telemarketing calls beforehand so if she had three telemarketing calls beforehand it's like why would she pick up your phone but it's also like this and i want to bring this up to where i kind of forgot a little bit but it's just like how do you know that those telemarketing are spam calls this is sean hi sean this is caleb i just had a quick question for you regarding like personal coaching i didn't know if you've ever done anything like that beforehand yeah, but I'm not interested, but thank you. Yeah, so it's not from me. It's more of just like just a research study trying to figure out like what people have paid for regarding coaching in the past. Well, I've never paid for coaching, so I can't be a, an example for you. So <laughs> wish you all the best. Thanks, Sean. See ya. That's fantastic. Um, 6856. And you could be like, wow, this dude's fantastic. I'm just trying to find, like, maybe we have to change. I, I want to do the coaching, dude. Like, I'm coaching you right now on how to make calls. This is Jenny. Hi, Jenny. This is Caleb. I was wondering if you had ever, like, hired a mindset or a personal development coach by any chance to help you grow the business? Um, I'm okay, but thank you. Yeah, so this isn't regarding mine. It's more of just, like, trying to figure out what or if other agents have ever hired one beforehand and what they did. Um, I think I'm okay right now, but thank you. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> See, and then you just go on to the next. On to the next. 
So we had two in a row though on that one. That one was pretty pretty nice. And as you notice, like it hasn't even been an hour yet. And I know that we're mainly getting voicemail after voicemail after voicemail, and this probably isn't like the most exciting content for YouTube, but this is what it looks like, dude. Hi Kyle, this is Caleb. I'm trying to figure out if agents have ever hired like a mindset or personal development coach. Uh, sorry, what was that last part? Uh, if like agents have ever hired like a mindset or personal development coach to like help grow the business, um, I'm sure they have. <laughs> Not something you yourself have ever done though. Nope. Any any reason in particular for that? Um. No, not necessarily. Do, do you just not find value in it or just haven't found like the right fit for you? Um, haven't seen a lot of value in it so far. Um, yeah, I don't do a ton of real estate. It's more uh, for investments. Okay. So like you're finding investors to invest in real estate for you then and you just have your license to be able to close deals or whatever it may be? No, mainly uh, my wife and I... Um, buy, remodel, and sell houses. Okay. Yes, I don't do a ton of, um, you know, I don't work for a lot of people. I'm just trying to um, list houses and, and sell houses that way. That's more for myself. Of course. And I guess when it comes down to, like, being able to find the homes to remodel, is there, like, are you just reaching out to people, or how are you typically finding those homes yourself, or is it Zillow or something like that? Um, mainly from the MLS. Um, also word of mouth. Um, yeah, we do a lot of farming. So we go around to neighborhoods and look for specific houses. Okay. And you're having to drive to all those places to find them then it sounds like. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out like what investors or people in the agency industry are like their biggest problem is and see if they have like, if it could be removed from them entirely, what that would be. Um, I don't know if you're the ideal person for anything like that though right now. It kind of sounds like you might not be. No, yeah, like I said, I don't do a lot of volume. Um, I'm not really interested in uh, that side of it. It's more for personal stuff. Yeah, no, I completely understand. And personal stuff just regard, like personal coaching or just a different side of personal stuff? Uh, the real estate side is just more for our personal business. Mm -hmm. It's not really... Yeah, we're not looking to to sell 100 houses a year. Yeah, I don't even know if real estate agents are even wanting to sell 100 houses a year. Like most of them I talk with don't even seem like they have driver effort, which is baffling to me. But what are you going to do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot that are getting weeded out right now. With yep. current economy. Yeah, I mean, I, I still believe that regardless of where the economy is at, people are always going to be buying and selling homes. It's just about positioning the value in the correct way. Yeah, yep. Awesome, Kyle. Well, I, I appreciate you. Hope hope you and your wife the best with what you guys got going on and hope you have a good rest of your day. Cool, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I could tell that there wasn't anything there on that one, but I still want to have a brief little conversation with him just to have a conversation with him. So that's what we ended up doing. Looks like it's taken about an hour to make 50 calls-ish. I did like two or three calls before I started the recording, so... Hello? Hi, is this Catherine? It is. Awesome. So I'm just doing like a little research project trying to figure out if agents have ever hired like a mindset coach or a personal development coach. I don't know if that's anything you had any insight into at all or not. Uh, I really don't have any interest, but, but thank you so much. Yeah, so it's not necessarily for me. It's just trying to figure out. <laughs> oh, this is great. And you notice how I reframe these types of things as well too. Like when it comes down to calling, dude, it's about reframing it in a way that is like good because each each and every single time that you make a phone call or that you get a rejection, it's not even a rejection. It just leads you closer to something that will amount to something that will give you some sort of like success that will help you close the deal that will get somebody on the line that is willing to buy from you. It just really depends on how much effort and work you're wanting to put into it and not being discouraged by the person like closing or hanging up the phone or something like that because that's all part of it because it's just about tossing the line out, figuring out works. If you if it works, awesome. Do more of it. If it doesn't, so be it. I always do more of it. You have reached Rick with Rick. So as you've noticed, we've had a couple of good calls. I don't even know how many good calls we've had at this point in time, but we have had a good amount of calls. I mean, then we get calls like that as well too. Um, 
And we might reevaluate the pitch as well too, so if we can implement something else. The mailbox is full <clears> and there is that one goes directly to voicemail. Because then I can always start to reach out in different ways as well too. And I also kind of changed what I was doing the other day where I was like, instead of saying it's like a research for school, it's just a research project because I am researching what agents need. And this is what you can do in any niche. You can do this anywhere that you want. At least that's what I'm doing right now. And then asking the questions and realizing like, I, yesterday I thought like the most somebody would pay for a coach was 2K. Today I learned that the most somebody would pay for a coach is 10K. Like you learn these things by having conversations with people. Hi, you've reached Lane Crum. This is what I love doing. So we're just gonna keep going from one to the next and i'll just give you my work ethic <clears throat> like this is what you get i have a feeling this person's going to answer just because they're at one of the agencies but also if you notice this too like i haven't done anything for this whole video other than make calls i haven't like responded to texts i haven't responded to emails i haven't done anything else other than that it's just one call after the next after the next after the next And like I said, I'm still not leaving voicemails, even though that one lady did say it would be a good idea. That'll be something for a paid membership. Like if you guys want to figure out how to leave voicemails, I can always like help you out with that as well too. Because leaving voicemails, it can be super simple. It doesn't have to be like overly complicated to be able to do those things. But like how I do this as well too, I just literally have an Excel sheet right in front of me. I blocked out like 10 different rows of numbers. And then I just started calling one after another after another to be able to see who I could get on the line, see who I could have a conversation with, see what I could do. And you can be like, well, you aren't booking meetings. I'm, my goal today is not to book meetings. My goal today was to just make calls. And since we still have time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <clears throat> we'll do a couple more just because we got time. I just want to see how many calls we can, like I said, 50, but I actually said we were going to make calls for an hour today. So that's what we're doing. And I've learned a lot so far. So I'd only blocked out 50. So that's why I had to do another like 10. Because my Excel sheet, I don't want to show you the numbers. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. This is Caleb. I'm doing some research to see if agents have ever hired like coaches or if they've ever thought about like using automation in the business to make it easier. I didn't know if that was something you had any insights on at all or not. Huh? Um, so like with agents, like I've talked with a couple of them or have tried to and most of the time I feel like they don't pick up their phones at all. So I was trying to figure out like what agents' biggest problem is right now that if they didn't have to do any more, it would help them sell more homes. What company are you with? What are you selling? So I'm with my own individual company. I'm a sole proprietor, LLC. I sell like coaching and I'm also just like doing research to see if this is things that agents are even interested in. So I, I have nothing to sell you right now. It's quite literally just research basically, trying to see what you guys want. Yeah, I'm, I would say that any good agent answers their phone usually, um, you know, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm right in the middle of trying to do this uh, divorce with a lawyer for one of my clients. I, I'm, I thought you were them. I, I got to get going. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, have okay. a good one, Jim. Best of luck. <clears throat> <laughs> See, sometimes people, like, they'll pick up thinking that you're somebody else, but that's okay. But then you just go on to the next really not that difficult i don't like doing emails and all this cold dm stuff dude like this is where i find the most amount of success and i've realized it's like you can test this by going on walks or like hikes it's free realty hi i was hoping to speak with uh bernadette who's calling please this is caleb okay caleb who are you with i'm with my own company quimby management what management quimby yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, it's it's new. I'm just reaching out to realtors to see like what their biggest problem is. I'm just doing like some research for a project that I have going on, and I'm just trying to get some feedback basically from agents right now. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to get back with you. Um, I am traveling right now. I'm heading back from Santa Fe, so. Uh, but I do appreciate the call. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and hope your trip went well for you too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, dude, I don't understand why people are like everybody. It's actually not. People are very kind and compassionate.
and willing to like take calls. It's really fun. We got like three minutes left. I'm doing an hour. I, I want to get through 60. We, we got to get through 60, right? We can get through 60 in three minutes. I don't want to make this video like a four hour long video. So I want to be able to just close out these last ones. Hello, you've reached Dusty. And see what happens from here. Because I still want to be able to make this into a video for you. <clears throat> and this is, by the way, this is me just doing the work, dude. Like, I'm just learning, I'm adjusting, making it small little pivots in the ways that we can. And then I'm just going to go give those things out to people. Because that, that I did learn something, though. Like, using AI for this can be very beneficial. And trying to get them, like, ways to qualify the leads or, like, just follow up. And it, I don't even need to necessarily run ads, but, like, being able to somehow circulate, say, phone numbers or something like that through, like, a software. Hi, you've reached me. That could be beneficial. And I understand that some of these agents are a lot more... Maybe they're part-time or they just aren't working. Hi, you've reached Vicky. Um, which is okay. <laughs> but like, it's almost, oh, we're gonna, I'm probably gonna have to run out of time. We're gonna get through the last few calls, but I don't think we're gonna have video for the last few calls. So it might just be audio unless I stop it again and start it, which I might. Hello? Hi, is this Sam? This is. Awesome, Sam. So I'm Caleb. I'm just doing some research, trying to figure out if agents have ever hired like mindset or personal development coaches. Um, I haven't. Any reason in particular for that? Um, I just kind of like to do things myself. Gotcha. Do you, is it because you don't find the value in a coach? Like you don't think they help you sell more deals or anything like that? Yeah, it's too expensive for me. What, so like I've talked with a couple of other ones. They say it's like 2000 for some. Some say it's like 10000 for others. Like is that what you're referring to or have you heard like different price ranges? I haven't looked into it much. Okay. And then one other question for you if you don't mind. Just curious as to like what it would – like if somebody could remove one problem for you like on a daily basis to make your life easier, do you have any idea what that would be off the top of your head? I know you said you like doing things by yourself, but I just didn't know if there's something that you don't like doing that if you somebody else did for you, it would make your life easier. Well, it's all about getting leads. Gotcha. Would you ever do paid leads at all or no? I have. You have? And did you find success in that? Um, for a time – um, I did. Yeah. And then it goes up and down like everything else. Yeah. Facebook leads, I'm guessing with that or Google ads or, um, the success I had was actually with, uh, my Zillow account. Oh, okay. So you're like promoting the properties on Zillow then? No, looking for buyers on Zillow's on Zillow getting connected live calls. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, Hey, I appreciate that, Sam. I'll let you get back to it. Hey, have a good one. You too. Very good insight and knowledge. I would like to be able to, we're going to have to do one more. It looks like. Uh, do one more. Hello, it's Colton. Hi, Colt. Hi, Colton. This is Caleb. I was reaching out to see if like you've ever done or thought about like personal development coaching or mindset coaching to help you grow the business at all. Uh, no, I already do personal coaching uh, through Buffini. Awesome. Do you mind if I ask how much that typically charges or like what that looks like for you? Uh, I'm not sure my, uh, my broker pays for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love when that happens. That's like the, the best way to get two birds with one stone. Is it, um, you just meeting with her like once a week and she just kind of like giving you insights and strategies or like, what does that look like? Um, yeah, I mean, it's insights, strategies. Um, uh, we do like a, a strengths profile. So, um, uh, they coach me to where my, like, strengths and weaknesses are um they even talk about future business planning like growing the team out um uh, my my uh, business partner and i are planning on growing our team and so they have now team coaching that we're going into as well so um it's kind of kind of a whole gambit nice it, it sounds like you found value out of having a coach then definitely awesome yeah some realtors i've talked with like i don't see value in having a coach i don't see why anybody would pay five to ten thousand dollars or something like that for that but it sounds like they've helped you out in more ways than you could count uh, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Cool. Colton, well, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, you have a good rest of your day, man. So thank you. Yeah, you as well, bud. Bye.
I could have done more on that as well, too, but I decided not to. Why? I don't know. See, and we just had two back to back calls where the number didn't work, but we'll get on the next one. We might be doing longer than this. Hi, is this Brittany? Hello? Uh, oh, sorry. Hi, is this Brittany? No. No, I, I, is it Yvonne? I might have the wrong number. Yeah, it is Yvonne. Yvonne, sorry about that. I, I'm one off. I'm reaching out to real estate agents to try and figure out if they've ever done like coaching or anything like that. Um, I have. And, and I, I don't want, I'm not, I don't want to do it right now. Yeah. So it's not me offering it to you right now. I'm just trying to figure out like what the coaching has looked like in the past for agents that have had coaching and then like the price that they paid for it. Um, well, the, uh, brokerage that I worked for, it was through my brokerage. Okay. So I know the details of it in terms of what it costs, blah, 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 all that. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Was it yeah. like a once a week meeting with the person though that was doing the coaching for you? Um, God, it's been years ago. I honestly, I don't remember a whole lot about it. No worries. I, I figured I'd just ask. Yeah. I mean, as you know, like selling homes, like the answer is always no, regardless of if you ask. So I was like, I'm just trying to see what has worked for you in the past or if there's maybe other problems that you've run into that like if you didn't have to do anymore, it would help you out in your life. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I am, um, I have a different model. I'm not like out trying to get new listings and buyers all the time. I have referrals and then we renovate houses. So I'm in a different model than a lot of people are working in. Yeah. Is your husband Kyle by any chance? I think I might've talked with him just a little bit ago, actually. No, no, <laughs> that might be Brittany's husband. I don't know. <laughs> like the same company name so i wasn't sure and okay. so i just yeah. wanted to double check i was like i it might have been a long shot but i was like i'll take a i'll take a shot in the dark i don't mind no 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 we're just um i i just have a different i you know i don't do a whole lot of buyer seller stuff mm -hmm. um i have just a few that i work with and then um and i'm at the end of my career honestly mm. i've been doing that since 2008 mm -hmm. and kind of at the tail end so I'm not really looking to build a lot of business. Of course. And it does, yeah, yeah, so kind of just taking the, the enjoyable life with the kids and everything like that. So completely yeah. understand Actually, I have that. grandkids. If you hear in the background, that's grandbabies. So it's grandbaby day today. Oh, that's adorable. So, well, I'll let you get back yeah. to your grandbabies, Yvonne. I don't want to take up more, much more of your time, but I do appreciate okay. you at least giving me that little bit of insight and hope you enjoy yeah, no, retirement if that's what you're doing. You're, whatever you're doing there. Thank you. I'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Yeah, dude. So you see how I even like messed up on that? Like I, I had the wrong one because I decided to incorporate a couple of different numbers. And I noticed that she had the same like business name as one of the other guys that I was talking to earlier. So I was like, I'll just shoot, take a shot in the dark. You never know what's going to happen. Like if you know how to have these conversations, if you know how to overcome these things, if you know just how to bounce off of one another, it's really easy. Most of, lot, most of the time people don't know how to have most of the time, people don't know how to have conversations, which is perfectly okay. I was in that place. That's why I got really good at having conversations so that I can just like bounce off the top of my head. Hi, you the voicemail of Brittany. There's Brittany. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, it's very easy to do these things and to have conversations with people. It's just most of the time, and I've, I took my time off as well too. We're just trying to get the call in the first place was difficult but it's also like it doesn't have to be difficult it can be incredibly easy if you do it in the right way if you do it in the efficient way most of the time people don't do it in the most efficient way they wait hours and hours and hours to be able to make the first call and as you've noticed it's like oh i don't have anything to sell you because right now i am quite literally just doing Hi, you've reached Becky Leonard. market research trying to figure out what it is that people want because it really is quite simple and I'm also just trying to hear, like, inspire you to be like, hey, this is what can be done in an hour if you just put your head down. Don't even have a clear offer. Like, I know. 
Good morning, this is Andrew. Morning, Andrew. I was reaching out to realtors trying to figure out if they've ever like done coaching in any ways, shape, or form. Just trying to figure this out for a little project I have going on. Uh, m- minimally, I guess. Give me, tell me more. <laughs> what specifically are you looking for? I suppose is the question. Yeah, so it's it's kind of along the realms of like helping with the mindset, like helping like gain more business, implement new strategies, maybe even manifest. I know that's a strange word for some people, but like just being able to create something out of thin air by not actually doing anything on the outside, but like doing it on the inside type of coaching. So it's a little bit different approach than like probably some other coaches have, but that's just kind of the avenue that I've been looking at lately. Okay. And are you looking for that type of coaching or you're looking for people who do it? Looking for people who are wanting to have that type of coaching for them. Ah, I get it. Okay. Well, I, I, that is not me. (laughs) Of course. So then I'll ask you one other question then, Andrew, if you don't mind. Um, have you found like any other issues or problems when it comes to like selling real estate? I know there's been like lead gen things. I didn't know if there's anything else that you had come to realize. Um, (laughs) it's, it's going to sound really dumb. Um, (laughs) Nothing sounds dumb. For me, it works, and and it's it's two very simple things. Uh, the first one is just never forget your fundamentals, and what I mean by that is like I still, in fact, I just had this exact conversation last night with a with a seller client. Uh, day one of real estate school, the first thing they teach you is the code of ethics, which I know for a lot of people like is a bunch of junk, or they don't pay attention to it these days, yeah. but. Like, I was 19 years old when I went to real estate school, and for whatever reason, it just, like, gravitated toward me, and the code of ethics thing was just stuck in my head. And so, I guess in a long-winded way, uh, client first at the end of the day. Like, you've got to put yourself in a position to set reasonable expectations for yourself and the client and do the right thing for the client 1,000% of the time, no exceptions, it's not about the money ever. It's about the client first. And if you do that, the money will follow. So it works a little bit in reverse. Hey, I couldn't agree more with you right there, Andrew. I'm not, everybody's always focused about the money, the money, the money. And don't get me wrong, it's important. But like, if you solve the problem, the money's just going to come as a byproduct. Well, it's, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't even go that direction, quite honestly. For me, it's, the, the question for anybody in any profession, right, is do you want to get compensated for what you do? Yes. Okay. Do you want to do that at a level where you can do good, feel good? You're not charging a bazillion dollars, but you're not doing it for free. You're putting food on the table for your family. You just want to be fairly compensated, right? Yeah. hundred percent of people are going to say Yes. So what's the next layer deep to that? Well, the next layer deep is here's what I can provide you. Here's what I offer. Here's how I offer it. And at the end of the day, what I charge gives me the ability to provide these services to you in a beneficial way, but it still allows me to make a little bit of profit so I can continue to do things at a high level and support my family. Is that an unreasonable request? No, No, it's not. (laughs) But most most people don't break it down in a way that shows the client that realtors aren't just out there to rip you off. Yeah, I don't like I've never understood that process as well, too. Everybody thinks realtors are trying to rip people off. It's like, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's probably some bad nuts out there, but 99 percent of people, I believe, are doing the, the, the best that they possibly can. And ethics is always. Yeah, ethics is the hardest thing because sometimes people aren't as ethical as they could be. So it's trying to find those things. And I like your approach that you're doing too as well, Andrew. So, I mean, it seems like it's working out for you and it has been for what, the 20 years that you've been selling real estate? Going on 22 years. It's incredible. Do you have any insights or like advice for somebody that is like just getting started out? Yeah, be my be my pupil. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, now I'm gonna use a little Jedi reverse on it. Are you, are you an agent as well? No, so I'm just really good at sales and talking to people. So I'm not certified or anything like that, but I love people. I love solving problems. I love just having conversations and presenting it in a way that'll maybe get somebody to think a little bit differently. So I'm just trying to solve problems for people right now. 
and I love the coaching. I love the human aspect side of things. And I, I just, I just want to be of service in the best ways that I can. So I'm just trying to figure out what works best or if there's any jobs that people have open for me. So I'm just doing what I do best and going to work and making the dials and figuring out what sticks. Well, I mean, it, that 99% of the time is how you sell houses is exactly what you just said. And you know, I will say too, like as much as being an agent is a sales proposition, I, I can honestly tell you, I've never actually truly sold a house a day in my life, not once. And, and it's all about mentality and approach. You approach it with the heart of a teacher and, you know, with the intentions of providing information and service, you're never doing sales. It's a service industry at the end of the day, but everybody perceives it as sales but it's not. And so you've got to approach it in a way of service and gratitude and dedication toward people and humanity and not out there just to get a sale and make a buck. Yeah. I can agree with you there. That's yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Sales has such a weird, weird connotation to it, but it's like salespeople are great people. Like they're just people that know how to talk and get rejected all day. And then they kind of just have a little bit of help afterwards. So Sounds like you're picking up the phones. I've talked with other realtors where they like they won't even pick up the phone. And I'm like, that just that doesn't make any sense to me. I get that there's telemarketers and spammers out there and things like that, but it's just like you could be leaving money on the table or at least some way that you could help get into their dream house. Like I just don't see the why people don't pick up their phones all that much anymore. Well, that is uh, always mind boggling to me as well. <laughs> well, hey, Andrew, I appreciate you sharing that with me. And I mean, do you need an apprentice or somebody to make calls for you for the time being by any chance? I mean, not, not necessarily. Um, I, I guess I, here's another little nugget of information, right? Like I don't strive to be too busy. Mm -hmm. It's just not where I'm at in life after 20 years of doing this. Right. So I, I'm selective with my clients. Um, I, most of what I do is repeat and referral business as, you know, as organically as possible within the industry. Um, I do all my own lead follow up, all my own lead jet myself. Um, the weird thing about it is I don't really trust anybody else to do it the way that I would. Yep. And so, so that's the hard part of like letting that go. Although I'm sure there's value in, you know, releasing control to a certain respect, but at the same time, like I, I'm not trying to do a hundred deals a year. Uh, would it be great? Sure. Of course. But you know, I got three kids and I am a dad Uber every single day and I coach competitive baseball for a team of and so I just where I'm at in life does not have the appeal for me to just go like gangbusters at this point I did that in my 20s and I was wildly successful and at this point I, I just want a really good work-life balance and for me that's about 20 to 25 deals a year and then I'm more than capable of doing that with my eyes closed. Yeah, I mean, with 20, almost 22 years of experience, I could expect you could do, I mean, it sounds like you've done way more, but yeah, like you know what works and you just go out and you just do the, do the work every day. That's been my whole thing. I'm like, why do people, a lot of people don't seem to want to have that work-life balance. That's almost, I feel like, more ideal. Why work every single day instead of enjoy the time with your family and kids? Well, that's absolutely part of it, and that's one of the benefits that, you know, real estate helps bring and provide uh, to people is that work-life balance. But for me, I have found that, and I've dealt with, you know, a lot of people on both ends of the spectrum, right? And part of the issue that I find is once you get involved with like a larger scale operation, um, so an agent who does an absurd amount of business, they tend to transfer everything over to assistants and transaction coordinators and other team members. And that for me just doesn't provide the level of personal touch and quality control from the client perspective. Um, I don't want things to slip through the cracks. And if I'm going to go out there, hustle and develop that relationship with whoever that individual may be, then part of the deal with working with me is understanding that like I'm going to take supreme control. Like I'm not going to relinquish you to somebody else. I'm not going to give somebody else the, the okay to handle your transaction. It's going to be me start to finish. And so th that's, that's how I've kept repeat and referral business so long 
is just being able to be out there, grind, and make sure that I am doing my part to take care of the client start to finish 110%. Yeah, I mean, that ties back to the ethics part as well, too. Like, you wanting to do as much work as you possibly can, and I can see that's why you have had such success in your careers because that's my thing as well, too. I'm like, I want to give people me. Like, they get every aspect of me. Like, whatever they need, they got it. And it sounds like you've done the exact same thing, and it's made you incredibly successful. So that gives me hope as a guy in his late 20s. Yeah, well, uh, that's that's where I'm at, man. I mean, it, you're approaching it from a little bit of a different perspective, I suppose. If you're looking at the coaching route. Uh, I don't know. Read, 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 dude. There's yep. all kinds of good books out there that, you know, are pretty influential. I mean, most of them are garbage, but <laughs> there's some good ones out there if you can get your hands on the right stuff. You have any book in mind that you could recommend? I do, actually. I got three of them right in front of me. First one is uh, Getting to Yes. That's a negotiating agreement without giving in. Yep. That's a good one. Um, it, uh, as odd as this one might sound, and as boring as it's going to be, uh, Plato's Republic. Great one as well, too. Uh, really good book and lots of really interesting just socioeconomic and kind of politically, psychologically driven approaches. So I, I'm into that kind of stuff. Um, Napoleon's Laws of Success. Another great one. Is a good one. And then my personal favorite is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I've listened to that one, have not read it, but those are all fantastic books right there. Yeah, those are, those are some of my favorites. And then, you know, just from like a, a growth perspective and mindset and bigger picture, uh, just about anything Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Yeah, I've read that one as well, too. In, in regards to the Plato and, like, the allegory of the caves, like, people are stuck in the in the caves, but you can't get the person to leave the cave. So that's kind of like, but you sell homes almost like getting the person out of the cave. So, like, you have found some success in that then, no? Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, I, I guess I view it a little bit of a different way. Um, instead of trying to get them out of the cave, Mm-hmm. Right, it's more about solution based. How can I get them to change their perspective of that cave? I like that. So it's less about drawing them out and more about getting them to see from a different paradigm, shifting the mindset and having them view that exact same cave in a much different way. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm gonna have to, I'll, I'll do my best to use that moving, maybe not use it, but implement it um, moving forward. Awesome, Andrew. Well, hey, I appreciate that advice. I don't want to take up much more of your time, and I, I could ask for all these other different questions and things like that because it is – like, coaching is great, but it's like if the person doesn't want coaching, like, they're not going to go coaching. It's like if you want therapy, they it's good for you, but they're not going to go. It's the same thing with the gym. It's like they know it's good for them, but they're not going to go. So it's like trying to convince somebody or influence or persuade them in the way that will help them, but it's also like not everybody wants help, which is what I keep, 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 seem to be running into right now. Yeah, it, that's – I would agree with you there. That's the hard part, man, because, you know, most like, I don't know, independent contractors, you know, realtors, like as sad as it may be, most of us are ego driven individuals and most of us feel like we don't need, don't want, or don't have the time to explore various levels of help. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, Hey, the reason why I don't need it is because I used to do it. I, I used to be part of the uh, board of education for the Association of Realtors, in, mm -hmm. and I used to I used to teach and develop course. And so uh, that that was one area where I started very young in my early twenties, just getting into the heart of a teacher educational aspect of real estate. And so the first course I wrote and taught was. The and that was it was a variation of the national brand of the GRI. Um, and then I worked with two of the, the regular teachers within the board to help kind of redevelop um, and just add, I guess I could say, some some various context to adhere to just a different demographic of an age group of person because the people teaching the class were in their 50s and I was in my early 20s. And so I viewed things significantly different with a 30 year age gap. 
And so I got the awesome pleasure of writing and teaching some of that coursework for younger individuals. That's awesome. That, that was, that's, that must've been super fulfilling. Like the coach, like coach, coaches and teachers and all this other information online, like it, it's, it helps out so many people, but it's like you're saying they're egotistical. They don't think that they can need this or this will help them or this will use like benefit them in any way, shape or form. But it's like, everybody reads a book. Everybody's trying to buy it. Like they went to college. You bought the information to get into real estate. So like, why not invest in yourself for some coaching or some insight into like how to grow in those ways. But everybody's different, like you said, and it's just, I guess, getting them from point A to point B and realizing that it's all about them and not about the coach or the consultant or whatever it is. It's like, what results do you want? And then giving that person those results. Yep. I mean, it's, it's a slow grind. Uh, you know, you'll find somebody that's out there. I mean, I, I guess if I'm going to give you any bit of advice, it would be to find similarly aged individuals who are just getting started in real estate. Okay. Like the seasoned vet is probably not your target. Yeah, I was noticing that myself as well, too. But I'm also like, I just like having conversations as well and seeing who or what their problems are because I feel like the seasoned vets have been in there for a lot longer than the newbies. And then I can be like, hey, this is what the seasoned vets are doing so I can help you get up to that place a little bit sooner. Right. Cool. Well, hey, I appreciate that advice, Andrew. I really do. It means a lot. And I'll look at, I, I need to go back and read some of those books. But other than that, I'll let you get back to your day. All right. Thanks. See you. See you. Fantastic. That was good. Okay. I want I could have kept going on that, but I'm just like, I don't, I didn't. Like I said, dude, I don't have anything to sell right now. And I just want to get, we'll get these last ones done. Um, and then we'll go. Do something. But yeah, this is what it takes, dude. This is what I do. This is what makes me different from a lot of other inbound salespeople is I literally do pick up the phone every single day. You want to see the work ethic? I'll show you the work ethic. I'll show you the work ethic every single day. Regardless of the mood, regardless of the feeling. We've had a good, couple of good conversations as well, too, which I'm grateful for. And I mean, you notice that as well, too. And I'm going to be able to go back and like look at this footage <laughs> did give some advice like it is better for like new up and coming than like the later people in their career but i don't figure this out i did like his change of like instead of, if you've ever this read john. hi john this is caleb i'm doing some research trying to figure out if like agents have ever hired like personal coaches or mindset coaches to grow the business uh, no, I don't. Have you ever considered doing that at all beforehand or just not one of the things that you think would add value to you? No, I, I, I don't think it's something that would add value, add value to me at this point. No worries. Is there something else or other problems that you have kind of struggled with in the past beforehand? Like maybe lead gen or anything along those lines that could kind of help you out? No, I've talked with some others. And... I'm really, really good on that. So, well, thank you for the call. Yeah, John, you have a good one. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. See, on that one, I could have kept going too, dude, but I don't know. I didn't want to on that one. Now, we're going to the record. This is Stu. Leave a message right here. We're going to... Recording's going to stop again, dude. Like, we've been doing this for a couple of hours. Just fun for me. I enjoy it. <sighs> Noticing a lot though. Oh, back to the all allegory of the caves. If you've never seen that or read that, I'll try and link it down below or something like that. Or you can just Google Plato allegory of the caves. You've reached Abigail. Because basically what it talks about is there's these shadows in. There's these shadows and most people are like stuck in the caves. But then once you get out and you realize that like, oh, I've just been watching shadows this entire time you kind of come to realize that, oh, everything that I once knew is a lie. And you almost reevaluate your entire life. So I like this quote, like, we question all the beliefs that we truly believe, those we never decide to question. So 
it's just interesting. And I, I get the advice that he did toss my way is like the beginner realtors will probably need this type of stuff more than like the more advanced ones. But Hi, this is Lane. I also want to be able to get as much knowledge and insight as I can. Um, the service you're attempting. So that the more I have, the more knowledge I have, the more info I have, I can relay better stories to more people because that's my biggest thing. And I just go one, 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 one over and over and over again until we get something. I just also like having conversations. So like, I'm not trying to pitch. I'm not trying to sell. How you reach Sam I'm also just trying to give you an insight into what I can help you do because maybe you don't have the work ethic or the drive. You're like, how do you just keep making call after call? Because I ran into that at, the previous company I was at. Christy, may I help you? Yeah, Christy, I was just curious. I'm reaching out to realtors trying to see if they've ever like hired a personal coach at all or anything like that and what it looked like. I never have. Any reason in particular for that? No, I listen to them like on YouTube or whatever it, or yeah, YouTube, but <laughs> I've never hired one now. Yeah, and because I listen to my own personal coaches as well too on YouTube and I've just mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out like some realtors I've paid like a lot for mindset coaching or personal development coaching. Some go to seminars. So I'm just trying to figure out like what would be a value in a coach for you to like want to move forward. Like if they helped you close more deals or something along those lines, because I believe coaching is one of the best things that a person can do for themselves. I've done it myself countless times. Yeah. Who do you, who did you use? So I have used, um, it was more of like, it was a psychologist coach. Like it was a personal development coach. It was back from, cause I'm not in the eight, I'm not in the eight, I don't, I'm not an associate myself. I'm just really good at people and sales and asking questions. So I've okay. used like personal coaches such as like Healthy Gamer was a guy on YouTube. He's a psychiatrist and I used his coaching before in the past. I've also gone to like spiritual coaching as well too. But I also have like had my own like success coaches at like my call or at my sales job as well too. So I'm just trying to like help others either grow their mindset or manifest more homes or deals or something along those lines so that they don't have to do as much work. I'm just trying to like share what I myself have learned and grown from my own expertise. Sure. And, and I know that you're coming in from Denver. It looks like, uh, what is your name? My name is Caleb. Okay. Hi, Caleb. Hi, Christy. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know if people need to know my name or not. So I'm just like, I'll just, I'll reach out and see what's up type of thing. But I noticed that you had been doing like, are you not in Colorado then doing your real estate? Yes. Okay. What? So, okay. Gotcha. Cause yeah, I noticed your number was 719. I, I wasn't sure exactly where that was. Yeah. Um, you're in your question. I'd probably say in training, it'd be nice to, um, for me, probably an accountability coach, um, Trying to think what else it would be. Training would be amazing. Some type of, um, uh, I'm trying to think what else that you just said there. <laughs> no, I mean, I kind of like the, the Tom Ferry kind of thing is what I follow a lot, and I actually do enjoy that quite a bit. It kind of gives me some different ideas, certain things to, to follow. Certain, you know, you just kind of just get into the routine, and when you kind of follow his ways, it kind of gets you a little bit motiv motivated to, to get things done. Yeah, and you've found the motivation from his coaching to be beneficial for you then, even if you aren't, like, having a personal coach ask you questions then? Um, probably not. Yeah, I would say and give me ideas on certain things to that I should be watching for and doing. And, uh, you know, like, for example, relationship comes, uh, compared to transactions, yes. Mm -hmm. And you've found success in that then at this point in time, it sounds like? So for me, yes. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. The whole accountability thing is something that like, I have no problem doing. I'm like, I, I would offer to do coaching for you, but I don't know if that's something that you want. I'm more just kind of doing like research today. So I'm just trying to see what people like and just trying to make people's day a little bit brighter as well too in the process. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, hey, Christy, if you have any other, well, actually I'll ask you one other question if you don't mind. Sure. Um, is there any other problems or like major issues that you run into? Because I've tried reaching out to a couple of other agents and they don't pick up their phone. So I'm like, clearly you're already ahead of them on that. So <laughs> they don't pick up their phone. I get their business. <laughs> See, you have the right mindset right there. 
most people don't think about it that way. I'm just like, you're, you're leaving money on the table at that point in time. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind when people don't answer. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Awesome. So then is there a problem or issue that you've run into that like, if you had re- resolved, it would help you out by any chance? Nothing that I can think of offhand, no. Because you get enough leads and like qualified buyers and sellers then it sounds like? Yes, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I just figured I'd check on that. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep in mind the accountability coaching as well too, so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, anything, I mean, there might be something I'm not thinking about. So are you, try, are you doing your own business? Correct, yeah. I started up my own like LLC. I left a sales job beforehand to learn about like the mindset and manifestation and how like we can have anything that we want just by like feeling it basically and imagining that it's already ours. So I'm just mm-hmm. trying to help other people come to that same realization if they want to. But it's also one of those things where like I can bring the horse to the water, but I can't make it drink. Like I can bring the person to the gym, but I can't make them lift the weights. Like I'm here to help people so that they don't need me anymore, basically. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if you ever need, like, if you want to do some accountability, like we can do a month or something like that together. But I'm also just like, I'm just tossing out and trying to see what people's interests are right now. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess, I guess, uh, anything helps. Definitely. Well then would you maybe want to do like a, a, a call maybe later today or tomorrow or something like that? And I could kind of lay out a little bit more or what do you think sure, about that? Tomorrow. tomorrow? Awesome. Yeah. Do you have a time in mind by any chance? Um, how about noon? Noon? That'll work. And are you on Mountain Standard? Yes. Awesome. And then do you have a good email as well, by any chance, that I can send over a meeting link to you? While you're doing this? Mm-hmm. Um, systems. That would be something I'd need. Systems is... what you offer. Yeah. So I, that's part of my coaching as well too, is like offering or helping like implement new systems as well too, because I know that there's a lot of different systems that it can be very beneficial to a lot of people. And like, I don't want to, I've never been a fan of like continually paying for subscriptions after like something's done. So I like just being able to be like, here's a system that I know will work and we can help implement it together or something like that. And then you can go off and use it in any, any way that you see fit, but that's good to know as well. Cool. Awesome. Tomorrow at noon. I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. And look at that, baby. Look at that, son. That's one. We we made it. How many fucking calls? Almost 100 calls and we get one. We get one. We get one, dude. That is beautiful. A5. We're still going, though. We're still going. I'll send her over the link here in a minute. But this is what it, this is what it, this is what it is, dude. I don't know how to say that name. Ogla. This is what it looks like. It's literally just a CRM. I'm just picking up the phone. I'm just making dials, and I know you didn't get to see any of that because the camera died. But you at least got to hear it. We're just gonna keep going and going and going. We got one. We got one. We got one, baby. It's a numbers game, and she was a little bit newer. In her industry, I'm gonna have to come up with a pitch for tomorrow or something like that because I have an idea on what we can do. But I'll talk with her tomorrow on Teams and I'll create like some sort of board or whatever it may be because it's all about giving her the results. Like it's all about her, it's all about her, and I'll help her out in the best way that I can. So I have to learn a little bit more about her and her, her needs. Hello. Hi, is this Caleb? Yes. Awesome. This is Caleb as well, too. I was, um, I'm reaching out because I'm trying to figure out like if agents have ever hired like coaches or anything like that to help them grow their businesses. Um, some do, some don't. Has that been, I so- didn't. you didn't any reason in particular for that? I, I had a good mentor is what I did. <sighs> so, uh, basically my, my, well, let me ask you this. Are you an agent? No, I'm not. I'm a sole proprietor. I'm starting up my own business, trying to figure out like what agents need. Cause I love the mindset manifestation, like just creating things out of thin air. So I'm just trying to help inspire other people to be more accountable and things like that. So not an agent myself. No. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, you know, my situation is a little bit different because I got my real estate license, started working here and then, I just have a really good relationship with my boss and he has needed the business to me. 
Uh, so I'm, you know, running the business and he's basically taught me everything. So I just had a good mentor. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say a coach is a good thing because to me, coaches, they come and go. Mm-hmm. A mentor that is able to leave you with a part of the business or give you the business or, you know, help you start your own business, things like that. Mm-hmm. I know there are those mentors that are out there. I think that's better. Um, and on top of that, all these agencies that offer internships, those are bullshit. <laughs> How so? What do you really learn with an unpaid internship? You're, you're, you're working your ass off and you're not paid to do it. Yep, I can agree with you there. I, I had a paid internship, so that's why I was curious as what you meant by yeah. that. Yeah, so, you know, when it comes to internships, unless they're paid, they're not worth it. So, yeah, but, um, that's kind of, kind of where I'm at with things. Like, you know, coaches, there's a lot of these coaching agencies that are out there, this and that. I don't see value or worth in them mm-hmm. because coaches come and go. But if you find yourself a mentor that's willing to stick with you and, you know, work with you side by side, it's going to last a lot longer. If the coach was able to do the same thing as a mentor would, where it's just like they don't come and go, like they're there for you through the thick and thin, would that be a different scenario for you then? Well, I wouldn't necessarily call them a coach at that point. I'd call them a mentor. Oh, okay. A mentor or a, par- or a partner, some sort of a partnership. But you never paid for your mentor. It was just like this person's just here to help you out. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never paid for it. I mean... And, and I guess in a way I am paying for it because he does get a chunk of my commissions. Yeah. But in return, when he retires, the whole business is mine. That's incredible. You got into a good spot then, Caleb. Yeah. So, I mean, that's and, – and the ironic thing, like I, my, my background is firefighting and I have multiple degrees and my biggest degree is in business management. Yeah. So my – one of the things that I've learned is, you know, building your businesses and everything. Businesses get built, businesses fail. That's just, you know, circle of life. Yeah. But if you're able to build a business and you then get people to work for you that are A, smarter than you, and B, they have that drive in that niche and they know that, hey, if I work for you, I get a part of this business when you go. They're going to stay longer. True. It's almost incentivizing you to it stay is. there. Got to have those. Got to have those incentives. So it's it's kind of it's kind of like uh, I, I used to do a lot of work with volunteers. Mm-hmm. And volunteers, the problem with volunteers today, there's a lot of people that want to volunteer, but the people that manage these volunteers don't know how to manage people. Yep. Unless you don't have a lot of volunteer organizations anymore because they fall through volunteers are people they need to be appreciated yep the same thing with workers you gotta appreciate them so and do you do you feel like most people aren't appreciated then in the work or the volunteer like that they're doing it kind of sounds like that's what you're coming off with no uh volunteers are greatly underappreciated and they are deemed by deemed as expendable it's the same thing with interns I, I have I have a lot of people that have come to me, a lot of kids that I've known throughout the years. Yeah. And I've told them, and they're like, yeah, I'm applying for this internship, but my first question is, is it paid? Yeah. And if they say no, then I say don't do it. Because you're spending your whole summer working for free. Yeah. And then when your internship is up, they say possible hiring, they're not going to hire you. Or they may. They may hire two or three out of the entire pool, but you are fighting for your life at that point, and it's not really worth it. So you almost don't be be- believe in doing free work then? I believe that we are to serve. I do believe that. Yeah. But I don't believe that we should be serving at a capacity to where we end up with nothing. I can agree with that have some sort of compensation for the work that we do. Yeah. I I mean, it doesn't need to be monetary. It it really doesn't. Some of the best volunteer stuff I've ever done with churches and everything was, you know, they'd buy us updated 
church or they'd give us movie nights or they would just close the church down for one night and it was just a volunteer come and hang out have a party yeah I didn't get anything out of no you know I just got fellowship and sometimes that's the best thing that you need yeah having that recognized and told you're appreciated which is underdone in the workforce in today yeah I I've never understood that it's just like everybody's working so hard and they just need a little bit of recognition, just a little bit of like, hey, like, you did good. Like, uh, thank you. Like, I don't understand why people can't do those types of things nowadays. Well, a large part of it is management. And management, you have good managers, you have bad managers. And the good managers are the ones that understand and they recognize. And they know that their volunteers or employees, they need to be appreciated. They need to be shown, hey, we were able to do this because of you guys. And... I want you guys to reap the benefits here of the hard work you've put in, whether it's a night out, whether it's a bonus, whatever. The managers that take the position, same with, you know, these, some of these coaches that take the position of people are expendable. Yeah, it's or, not right. You know, you guys are working hard for me and I'm going to reap the benefits. Those are the people, yeah, they make money, but they have a constant turnover. And eventually, people catch on, and those people end up going belly up because of it. So, but back to you when it comes to, you know, coaches and this and that. The, the, the term coach is so overly used. Mm-hmm. But the term mentor hardly exists right now. Okay. So, so I would, I would, I would you know, change your focus here from coaches to mentors yeah i like that and mentors that are going to be partners that are going to help you benefit i like that real estate whether it's in small business entrepreneurship whatever yeah i'm mentoring you to have the most amount of success (laughs) that you possibly can would consultants fall under that same umbrella for you then or is that what does that look like for you no, I think volunteers fall under that as well. But like consultants, though. Like if you're a consultant. Oh, yeah. Yes and no. I mean, it depends on the consultant. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what are they actually consulting you on? Is it finance, uh, financial stuff? Is it in this? Is it in that? Like, I have a really good, uh, good buddy who, you know, he consults me now and then on financial stuff. And part of what happens is, hey, I put my money here. And instead of me constantly looking at it, he looks after it, checks in with me, this or that. And if it works out, hey, great, I get get to reap the benefits. If it doesn't work out, then, hey, you know, I thought this was a good thing and it didn't pan out. I'm going to give you X, Y, Z because I consulted you wrong. You know, I got a benefit from that. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody buys benefits, not features. It's like, and everybody's in it for themselves at the end of the day. So it's like, how do I help you out as much as I possibly can? And that's where I guess the mentor comes yeah. in. Is like, I want to help you out so you can be successful. So that then you can take mm-hmm. over this. And I'm also gaining success as well, too, because I'm teaching you to be better than you were beforehand. Yeah. Have you ever looked up uh, or gone to a life surge event? A life surge event? Life surge. Yeah. I don't, th- I've gone, no, I have not. Next, uh, I don't know if you're based in Colorado. I or am. Not, but, uh, yeah. Next, they roll through about once a year. Uh, they usually do one in Denver, one down in Colorado Springs. I would go. It's a, it's a faith-based uh, organization that uh, their whole thing is, you know, helping Christians and everything build their wealth. I love that. And one of the things that they do, uh, the three, there's three things that they, they focus on. One of them is... Uh, res- um, real estate investments. The other one is stock investments. Now, the third one is uh, building portfolios for your future and your children's future. And through all those things, you, you know, you, you go to the main event, then you sign up for whatever class you want to take. You go into that class. And in that class, you are assigned a mentor. You're not assigned a coach. They don't call them coaches. They call them mentors. And that mentor meets with you. He, you know, he's available. You call him. He'll answer the phone. 
answer your questions, and he will walk you through and help you build whatever you're trying to do, whether it's with real estate, whether it's stocks, whatever. They have their own programs for all that, so they help you with all that stuff. That's and it's a great event. Yeah. And you know, there's there are people that are there, coaches that are there that you would have never thought that they're millionaires, but they are. But they're mentors, so, not coaches, though. Yes, right. They're mentors. Sorry, I used the wrong term. Mentors, <laughs> not coaches. So, and they, they stick with you. They, you know, they, they basically stick with you until you, you know, feel like you don't need them. And that's, um, yeah, that's my whole thing. I'm like, I want to be here for you until you don't need me anymore. Like, that's my yeah. whole goal. Like, you give me, I'll give you as much as I possibly can. I'll give you everything, actually. And then, like, once you don't need me anymore, like, if you just if you're successful and you got to the place you need to get to, I did my job, like, and that's all I that's all I care about. Yeah, yeah you're getting it. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking my shots. I'm I'm trying. I'm doing what I can. Yeah. Well, hey, Caleb. So what kind of consulting consulting do you do, or are you just trying to figure things out? So I've been just making calls, trying to figure out what works best because. I, I, I gave up my last sales job because God told me to go do something else. And I was like, I, I want to learn and be of service in new ways and actually help people improve. So my consulting and work that I do is just like, I am very good at identifying problems within people and like helping them reframe their reality or helping them look at things in a different way and giving them different perspectives. So I guess my consulting mentorship is basically just like, what does this person need and how can I best serve them in the way that I need to? It's difficult though, because it's like, not everybody knows that they need to go to the gym or that therapy would be good for them, but nobody does that thing. So I'm like, how do I get somebody interested in something that will benefit them, even though that they don't know that it'll benefit them in. So I've been, it's it's a little challenging, but I'm trying what I can and the best ways that I know how right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. Well, good luck for you. I was able to talk with you Give me some pointers and stuff. Yeah, I appreciate that, Caleb. Whenever I get to meet with another Caleb, I always like having that, especially when it's spelled with a C. So it's, I appreciate all the insight oh, yeah. and advice that you gave me. So I'll have to look yeah, up the life like search, search stuff and reframe some of the ways that I look at things. So I appreciate you, man. Yeah, not a problem. You have, yeah, have a good one. I'll talk yeah, soon. You, yeah, same to you. See ya. Bye. That's so true. This was also a good one. That's so true, dude. It's all about how you frame the reality in the world that you're in right now that matters the most. That's not right. It was a number, not what I was saying, but like, <clears throat> I like, I'm going to try that on this one. This is where I say like, everything is just, it's all, it's all changing. It's all ever evolving. Hi, is this David? Yes, it is. Hi, David. This is Caleb. I'm just reaching out to see if like any associates or realtors have ever had like mentors, coaches, or consultants to help them like grow their business. Um, no, I haven't. Any reason in particular for that by any chance? Um, I'm pretty happy the way I, I'm doing business. I've been in business since 84. Yeah, I was just about so, to say, it seems like you've been there for like almost 40 plus years or something like that at that point. Yeah. That's awesome. Well then, do you mind if I ask you something real quick? Sure. What's made you successful so far, like with doing business for so long? Because most people like in their early 20s don't seem like they're able to stay around and stick with something for very long so well you got to be able to be available you got to be there when you say you're going to be there and do what you say you're going to do okay and that's what's led you to the success that you've had then yeah awesome well hey i appreciate that david i have a feeling you probably got other things that you got going on today but appreciate you taking the brief call and hope you have a good one no no problem and thank you for calling yeah thank you bye, bye. I could tell that he was not the ideal buyer, but like dude's been in business for 41 years at this point in time. And he is that far along. Like I, there, there's this thing in sales. And when you talk with people, you can tell typically when people are interested in wanting to have a conversation versus people where it's like, okay, I can learn a lot from you, but I don't have, like we don't have to have a long lengthy conversation. Good morning. This is Lori. Good morning, Lori. This is Caleb. I was reaching out to associates today trying to figure out if they've ever had like a mentor coach or consultant to help them grow their business at all um you'd have to call the the main line okay are you not one of... my business is booming i'm doing great i am like so busy that's so thank you very much though yeah if... but you're welcome to call the main line 
Awesome. And it, is there any way to relieve that Thank busyness you. from you? No, no way at all. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> That's very fantastic. Busy, busy and blessed. Very thankful. I'll let you get back to it, Laura. You have a good one. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. So you notice how I, I reframed that and changed that because I, she was trying to control the conversation. I was like, nope, nope, nope. You, I will, we'll go the route that I want to take because that's what we do. And she gave me the number, but I was like, nah. This is, we have three more left and then we'll call it. I think we're at like 100 or something like that. Pretty dang close. So it's all about them, dude. It's all about them. <laughs> It's crazy how easy this is. I'm sorry about what I just did right there. It's a little like, I know some people don't like that, but. This is Jamie. Hi, Jamie. This is Caleb. I was reaching out to see if like you as an associate has ever had like a mentor to help you succeed in new ways. Um, like as with our office or? With your office, with your business and your life, like any areas that like you feel like you're struggling with, like just trying to help you in the ways that you are looking for help in, like actually tailoring it to you and not giving you like, this is what you need to do because this is what everybody else is doing. But like, this is what we could do because this is something that you find value in type of thing. Right. So I currently have a coach already. Mm -hmm. And do you mind if I ask what that looks like? But I'm doing some like research on figuring out like what other coaches in this industry are doing right now and how it's helping out uh, the people that they work with. Um, I actually am in a class right now. I just <laughs> out to take a call. Um, well, hey, I that mean, means you're. Quickly, it's just like I taught. It's a phone call for an hour every couple of weeks, and uh -huh. we just kind of focus on whatever areas I'm either struggling in or needing help or clarification in or you know, it changes all the time with what your, what my needs might be. So sometimes it's about marketing. Sometimes it's about personal life stuff. It just can be, it varies a lot. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And I, I can already tell you that you're succeeding because you stepped out of a call to take my call. So <laughs> <laughs> you're already steps ahead of other realtors that I I've talked to today. Class, yeah. <laughs> Gotta go. Yeah, most people won't do that. I'm like, what are they doing? They're leaving money on the table. So I'll let you get back to the class if you need to. <laughs> but I just want to let you know that you're already like 10 steps ahead of every other realtor out there right now. Hey, that's some good news for the day. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, dude, like people like that that actually pick up the phone, dude. Like those are people that fucking win, dude. Those are people that win, dude. People that don't pick up the phone don't win. That's just That's just what it is. It's just how it is. I don't, like, you can say anything else you want about it, but people that pick up the phone win. I don't even know how many calls we made. <laughs> I've lost count at this point in time. But yeah, like, she stepped out. She's like, oh, this could be a lead. So I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to answer it. Like, how many calls have we had today where people don't pick up the phone? You pick up the phone when you run a business. Hello, you've reached Shelby Tree. Oh my goodness, dude. <clears throat> Oops. I entered in a zero at the end of that one. I don't know how many we're at. We made a lot. We got one meeting booked for tomorrow, which is pretty chill. Hello. Hey, is this Glenn? Awesome, Glenn. I'm just reaching out to associates trying to figure out if they've ever hired like a mentor or coach to help them in their business and personal life. Excuse me. Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, of course. I'm trying to figure out if like associates have ever hired like a mentor, coach, or consultant to help them in like their business and personal life. You're asking me if I do or if, if you, if you have associates, do you mean? Yeah, like if you ever have yourself. Um, I don't share information like that with people that don't identify themselves. Don't tell me who they work for. What well, you think I just like give my personal information out to people? No. So my name's Caleb. I'm just reaching out to realtors. I'm starting up my own like little business. It's Quimby management. And I'm just doing some like research basically. So I completely understand where you're coming from. I wouldn't be giving out random information to other people online as well too, without identifying themselves. I just know that I wanted to like not take up too much of your time. So if you want to hang up right now, Glenn, completely understand that. No harm, no foul at let, all. Let, let me give let me give you a little coaching. Please. Okay. Please. When you when you call someone, yeah. you should identify yourself, say who you work for, 
try to establish some credibility mm -hmm. first okay. before just blurting out blurting out a question to some stranger. You have no idea. You know, I have no idea who you are, dude. Of course. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. I'm like, holy fuck, man. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm having a nervous breakdown, and uh, I'm, I'm all about to file for bankruptcy, and I have all kinds of people I hired to help me out. So, no, I do not. But, you know, I have hired people in the past. Um, to help me in various aspects of my life. So I wish you the best of luck in your next phone call. Yeah, dude. And I, I hear you with that okay. brokerage stuff and okay. bankruptcies. Okay. I, I, and it's I, I like it's hard, man. It's No, dude, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. This life in this world that we live in, it's, it's tough, dude. Like, it's the hardest thing that we've ever had to do. And I understand that 100%. And I'm not trying to, like, I don't want to influence your change. Like, I'm just... I understand because it's it's hard, man. Like it's really, really hard out there. I've struggled my entire life as well too. So I, I'm just trying to inspire and maybe make somebody's day a little bit better. And I apologize for coming on the way that I did. Well, not my actually, intention at all. I think I don't think it's hard at all. I think if you have a positive attitude and you show up on time and you're professional when you greet people, then it's pretty easy. So a couple books I would suggest you read mm -hmm. is one one book probably one of the greatest books I ever read is Secrets of Closing the Sale by Zig Ziglar. Okay. That's a great book. And then uh, uh, the head coach of CU Boulder, I forget his name. Um, what's his name? Um, he has a great book. The head coach of CU Boulder is like the famous guy. I just read it. It's a great book. Head coach I, I was, of CSU? No, CU Boulder. CU Boulder. I always get yeah. CSU and okay. CU. Dion Sanders? Yeah, yeah. Dion Sanders' latest book. It's a really, really good book. Okay. Okay, okay buddy. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Have a great day. Yeah, you as well, Glenn. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, dude. Sometimes we get things like that as well, too. But this is where I say, like, you don't take anything personal. <clears throat> but you could tell that that was, a, like... Those are the words. I, I could feel that, dude. I could feel that. Oh. Hi, is this Marshall? Yeah, this is Marshall. Awesome, Marshall. This is Caleb. I'm just reaching out to associates today, trying to figure out if they've ever had, like, mentors or coaches to help them grow their life and their personal business at all. Uh, no, thanks, man. I'm good. <laughs> no worries, Marshall. <laughs> Seeing that you get that as well, too, which I don't mind. I really don't mind. I'd like to end this. We'll do, what, a couple more? One... And yeah, we'll do 10 more and then we'll call it. This is the day, dude. This is the day because I still need to edit this video as well too. Oh, but yeah, it's nothing personal, bro. Nothing personal. Never has been, never will be. So. Ten. Some people say don't inter introduce yourself, like do introduce yourself. Like who knows? Everybody's different, dude. Like you could tell, like I, I wanted to give that dude at least some sort of insight and knowledge because those were probably the we words. Those were the words that he needed to hear that day. I could just, I could feel it. I could tell he was stressed out, and it's at least good to hear that he doesn't believe that life is hard and it doesn't have to. And if you show up and you have a positive attitude, then you're great. And you notice that that. Mike speaking. Hi, Mike. This is Caleb. I was just reaching out, getting some research done for a project that I have going on, trying to figure out if like associates have ever like hired a mentor or coach to help them in their business and personal life. Well, uh, probably, but I live in Florida. <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with that now, thanks to the internet. You still had a, a Colorado area code, so congrats yeah, on moving yeah. to Florida. Carry it with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way, man. I'm like, I don't think I'd ever lose my 720 or 330 number if I if I had to. I'm going to lose my number, it's, you know, five that. that you can't you you, you just yeah, can't exactly nope i'm sitting in the grass it's 75 degrees in the sunshine out here so dude i'm a little jealous right now it's 30 i think outside in colorado right now I haven't even checked the weather but i'll let yeah, you get i was watching the denver news this morning it was 28 degrees when i saw it so enjoy <laughs> hey i will <laughs> um right. i do have one question yeah you too yeah. mike um i was just gonna ask All like right. Do you have any insights for anybody like looking to get started out, like any books or success that you could pass down to somebody such as myself? What 
are you getting into? Um, like coaching slash consulting, like helping realtors just like figure out what their biggest problems are, like helping them just solve them. Oh, well, you know, uh, I always, I always taught Stephen Covey and I always did Dale Carnegie and you can't go wrong. Dale Carnegie's really good. Okay. I'll look into him a, a bit more. I've read some of his, his books beforehand and I really enjoyed them yep. a lot. Yep. It's uh, how to make friends and influence people. It's very, very good. Yep. I'll have to pick that up again. So I'll let you get back to your nice sunny day though, Mike. And thanks for All taking right. the call. You got it. Bye. Somebody did just call me back as well too. Um, I want to finish these last ones up before I make any follow-ups. Dale Carnegie and Stephen something. <clears throat> I don't remember what it was. But. Jay. Your call has been forwarded. Jeanne or something like that? I don't even know on that one. Um... Hello. Please state your... Oh. Last ones, dude. Yeah, I'm going to call you back here in one second. I know what I was said about, like... But I want to get this batch done first because I like being able to focus on one thing before I jump on to the next thing. Jamal. I just want to get these last couple of calls done. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. It's just getting these last couple of calls done. Hi, thanks so much. And I wanted to finish on a win, which I mean, we probably still will. Oh, hey, he at least sent me over something. Which is great. We're changing the perspective. I'm gonna stop this and we're gonna start it again. I have no idea how we're gonna link all this up to because we've had to stop and start this like three or four times at this point. So this is still recording though. And you notice how I made the adjustments from this yesterday to this today? I learn, learn as I go, learn as I go. I'll give it like two more rings. You've reached Mel. And I need to make that last call back. And I have to send over an email as well too. Hi, I was hoping to speak with Sharon, if she's still in. Sure, yeah, give me just one moment. I'll get you right over to her. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. See, dude, it's too easy, bro. Like, salespeople, people in general, they're so afraid to do this. But, like, what? We've been doing this for maybe three hours at this point in time. I don't know how many calls we're at. There's going to be a call counter somewhere. But, like, you can just check it out. Like, it's really this easy. You just go one after another after another. It's a couple of hours. I mean, we got one booked thing for tomorrow, which is fantastic. Law of averages, bro. Just keep reaching out. You show the work. Something's bound to come. I do have to make a call back and send some texts as well, too. But other than that, like, this is what it takes, dude. This is what it is. This is how it is, too. Hi, you have reached here. We got three left, and then we'll call it, and then I'll, I'll actually, I'll keep it recording for the callback that I have. I have a Hello, feeling, you Mike. I have a feeling it's with the lady that I talked with the other day where I was going to do like a video project for her, because I also know how to do like video editing, things like that. And then after doing those types of things, like after doing it, I was like, I'd rather just do coaching because I like coaching. I feel like I, I'd rather see the person improve and evolve that way, but I'll give her a call back <clears throat> here in a second. She's got two more calls and then we'll do that one. Super nice lady, very, very nice lady. And then I'll give you my final thoughts and we'll kind of go forward from there. And if there's like I said, little weird cuts or something like that throughout this, we'll figure it out. But dude, once you know how to talk to people we are unable to and you understand that like there is no rejection, you detach yourself from whatever it is that you have going on In your own mind, everything becomes a whole lot easier. So this will be the last call and then I'll do the follow. Hi, Kristen. This is Caleb. I'm reaching out trying to figure out if like realtors have ever hired like mentors, coaches, or consultants to help them in like their life and business and personal life, basically. 
do what? So like I'm doing like research, trying to figure out if associates, brokers have ever hired like a coach or mentor to help them like grow their business or improve in other areas of their life as well. Oh, no, I haven't. Any reason in particular for that? I've had great mentors through my life, just through work and the person that I first started with when I had my license. And the other reason, I, I mean, I don't have a mentor for my life. I just, I'm very religious and I only need one. <laughs> that's God. So that's, that's my, that's how I roll. <laughs> I like that. I was just talking with another guy as well too, because God kind of put me in this place to try and inspire other people in a different way. So I'm just trying to spread some like positivity around the world right now. Um, and just trying to see what, what can happen from that because I completely understand. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's, it's a little challenging, but we get some people here and there. Like, I mean, you understand that I feel like as everybody else does, not everybody's going to believe it, but you believe it and that's all that matters. <clears throat> well, that's nice that somebody, there's more people like you out there. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like there's not many, so. Well, I mean, that's what Jesus. Good Je job. Yeah. I, the word. <laughs> I mean, that's what Jesus did, right? Like, he just walked around, tried to inspire other people, and then that kind of created a ripple effect after a certain point. Yep. So, yep. I'm just sure. trying to do the same thing myself, and I know he never really got paid, but it's also like we got bills and things that we have to do, so I'm just trying to be a service to people in the best way that I can. Well, good luck, and bless you, and I hope you have a happy holiday and Christmas, Merry Christmas, all that good stuff to you. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Merry Christmas to you as well. You have a good one. I'll talk soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You too. Bye. Right, bye, bye. I didn't want to pitch on that one. I also didn't feel like I needed to control that one either too. Um, I have voice. That's what it is. Hold on. I have a feeling I know who this is, but like I said, I'm going to be the person that still does what needs to be done. Um, who's this one from? Is this who I think it is? How many numbers do we have? No, I don't. Who is this one? I received a call, but I was trying to. There's nothing. So this person left a voicemail. I've received a call from what? Let's just see who this is. Where are you? Can I just call this back? Let's just call this, see what happens. Thank you for calling Xfinity. This call may be monitored or recorded. For more information about our privacy... Okay, that's not, like, Xfinity. Weird. I don't know. Well, okay. I don't know how many calls we made, but we did a lot. I could keep going, but we'll wrap up the video here. I got a booked meeting t for tomorrow. Got to send over some emails. I also got to edit this video as well, too. If you want to learn more, if you want to have insights on how you can actually just pick up the phone... Let's actually figure out the exact amount of calls or dials that I did before we wrap this up because I started a little bit late. We did 89 dials. Do we want to do 10 more? <clears throat> you want to do 10 more? One. We'll do 10 more. I don't know what else we have, dude. Like, <clears throat> I'll do 10 more. I guess we'll actually do 11 instead. Maybe even 12 just so that we can have 100 on the docket. Oh, phone. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else we got. See, and this is something else that I'd like for you to realize and recognize. Each one of these calls, nobody knows the amount of calls that I made prior to this other than me. Like, this is the first time that they think that I'm having this conversation, which it is in a sense. It is in a sense. So. But yeah, I'm basically, Your call has been as you can tell, I'm probably, maybe as you can't tell, or maybe you can tell, I'm basically done at this point in time. We did a couple of hours. Still need to go back and edit this, like I said. Like to eat lunch, <clears throat> but there's no buts. This is what it takes, dude.
But yeah, I'll do these last like four. I know I said I wanted to end on a high note, which I kind of did as well too, but. We got one meeting for tomorrow, which is pretty chill. Um, But yeah, dude, I think that we are kind of tapping out. We've had a, multiple different good conversations, which is great. Lang, I think that's how it says. Oh. Hello. Hey, is this Lang? Yes. Awesome. My name's Caleb. I was just reaching out to see if like you've ever hired like a mentor or coach to help you in your business and personal life. Yes, I have. Awesome. I uh, have one currently. Uh, are you guys doing a program or something on that? Yeah. So I'm actually an independent contractor. I'm just starting up my own business, trying to find people that are looking to like have a better mindset, manifest more, just kind of change the perspective around the world. So I'm just reaching out and seeing if there's other associates that are interested in those types of things. Um, I don't know if maybe you'd want to learn a little bit more about that at all or not, even though you already have a coach, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, I do appreciate you reaching out. It's a great business, uh, but I, I, I'm good at the moment. So I appreciate the call. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask like what your coach in process looks like right now, just for some research perspectives, because I'm, I'm still new at this. I'm trying to figure out what it, it looks like for other people that already have coaches. Yes, uh, I don't have long, but it's so I'm, and we actually have an internal, uh, some internal coaching options, some paid, some not paid. Um, and I've been the recipient of some of both of those, um, currently and in the past. So that's kind of our, uh, at a national level and at kind of at a local level. Um, so that, that's how I receive that kind of coaching and just some other personal things in the past and do you mind if i ask what price point that was typically at oh that's a good question um man i couldn't tell you off the top of my head um they're usually kind of packaged to us within the company at a discount compared to what that same coach offers outside of the company Mm mm-hmm so, so if you just want to do a little research, a guy named Lance Pendleton is, he was, he's now freelance, but really great real estate coach okay. um, and just all around great guy. So that would be a place you could, you could do some digging in. Um, I mean, he's highly sought after, so he's going to be expensive, <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> but he's a guy that I have done some of that work with. Okay. And that was Blance, you said, Pendleton? Lance, Lance. L-A-N-C-E, Pendleton, yep. Awesome. Super cool guy. And the coaching too that you have done, was it just like an hour per week? They just kind of check in on you, see how things are going then, or is there something that they would focus on? It was group. Um, I mean, I've done some personal, but the with him particularly, it was a group uh, situation. Um, not a, you know, not hundreds, but, you know, a few, a few dozen. Ah, okay. Um, so that was that was that particular situation. Awesome, sweet. So well, a little more, a little more. Uh, I mean, there was some personal interaction, but less obviously than with one on one. Would you? Uh, but did, still, was still helpful. Did you prefer the group over? Like, it, if you had the opportunity to do personal, would you like that more? Or yeah, good question. Depends on the situation. I mean, in his case, I was fortunate enough to get it, you know some. Uh, some time even in a group setting with him because he just really sought after um, with the opportunity for some Q and a in the chat and some things like that. It wasn't, it wasn't a webinar where he was just doing all the talking. There was, you know, some back and forth, but in that situation was glad to do it even as a group, but probably benefited as much or more from some one-on-one as well. Yeah, it seems kind of like you didn't even have the ability to ask him a question directly. It was only in the chat, which seems a little odd to me, but. Yeah, no, I mean, for that particular setup, I mean, that was a really great situation. Um, but, yeah, just uh, 
I, I you know, it, it's kind of situational. Both both have been helpful. That's good to hear. Yeah, I'm like I've always been more of the one on one because I feel like I get to know more about that person and I get to yeah. help them in their own unique individual way. The group's yep. great, don't get me wrong, but like the one to one, like you can ask questions. There's no like judgment. There's no fears. Like it's just like we're open and transparent. Where yep. like in groups, I feel like sometimes people are a little bit reserved because they don't want to be like yes. judged from other people by asking a dumb question. Correct. Where I'm like, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Like it's just a question. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Well, yeah. hey, I've got to go, but I really appreciate the call. Yeah, likewise, Langan. I if you ever want to do coaching like with me one on one, more than happy to help you like manifest and have a better mindset around that as well too. Could okay. do like a five to ten minute call tomorrow if you're interested. Um, not interested in that. <laughs> no, you, no worries, Lang. Yeah, you have a good rest of your day and appreciate the the research. So thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks, <clears throat> yeah, dude, you got to ask. We're learning lots and lots and lots of things right now. Some people are for it, some people aren't, but. Hello, please state your name after the tone and Google Voice will try to connect you. Caleb? It's been a minute since we've had a Google Voice one, but. I just wanted to get 100 in for you today to show you, like, this is how it works. But we'll tap out here in a second, even though we don't want to. But I don't know if you also caught that as well, too. Because you know how I was like, oh, I don't want to do any more. I'm tired. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then what ends up happening? We'll get another good conversation. Because it's always just one more, dude. Like, it's always just one more. Because you never know which one is going to give you the most amount of success, acknowledgement, whatever it may be. Like doing this stuff as cold calls is a little, little tough, but that could also be my own mindset that's lacking. Like this could be the easiest thing that I've ever done, which it is. I'm trying to get all of this done before lunch. Hello, this is Sam. Hi, Sam. This is Caleb. I'm doing some research today, trying to figure out if like associates have ever hired like a mentor, coach, or consultant to help in their personal and like professional life. Okay. Who are you with, Caleb? So I'm with my, I'm an independent contractor. I'm starting up my own like coaching and consulting business. So I'm with Twin okay. B Management LLC. I'm just trying to get some research and see if this is something that's even like the market's even interested at all in the first place. Yeah. What kind of coaching and consulting do you do? Basically mindset, manifestation, personal development, like anything that would be tailored to the specific individual is what I aim to do. Like I just want to help the person succeed in whatever area that may be. And that's just basically the type of coaching that I do. So it's a little, it's not great. Like it's, it's great what I can do, but like it's not very like niche down because it's tailored to the person basically. Gotcha. Um, so what's the question? Have, have I done coaching before? Yeah, if you've done any coaching and then like, I guess what it looked like along with like the price point, if you had. Um, I've done several different coaching programs from 50 bucks a month to 1500 bucks a month. Do you notice a difference? And but sorry, you can continue on. No, I mean, the, the 50s group, um, 15 was individualized. And then there's different um, different levels in between that, which were combinations. Um, I don't do, like, mindset motivational type stuff. Um, but uh, I did, like, very sp specific to my business. Mm -hmm, like people who do it, people who do exactly what I do, but at a higher level. Okay, so like strategies, ways to close more deals, things like that, basically. Yeah, so like I've worked with people who were closing, you know, a thousand deals, transactions per year, mm -hmm. five hundred transactions per year, because I'm not doing that level, but I'm doing that, and they're like, this is their playbook. This is exactly what they're doing today, not theory, not you know, uh, conceptually, but this is what we're doing right now with my team that's closing this much business. And did they do it? So it sounds like, are you trying to get up to the thousand homes transactions per year then? Like, is that the, the goal for you? I'm not trying to get a thousand, but I'm trying to get more. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I was just curious about that because I've always believed that like having a clear like idea or like outcome helps me reach that outcome more than not having that clear idea or outcome. And I'm not saying that that's not you, but that's just my no, no, perspective. Sure. I mean, that's a, a good point and good path, but yeah, a thousand's not my not my energy, man. I'm trying to have a good 
work-life balance. I hear you there. I was talking with a guy earlier who said the exact same thing. And then, so you have noticed benefits from hiring that coach that is in the industry though? Like they have helped you in ways that you find valuable though? Yeah, they've been good for me at the times when I've needed them. And then when I've got what I thought I needed, I stopped that coaching program. Cool. Awesome, Sam. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your day, man. So thank you. You too, man. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. There was another question that I had, but I kind of like escaped my mind for a brief second. So it'll probably come back to me and Dude, I'm just like, I'm at the point, like, I even can get exhausted with this type of stuff, but I'm not really even exhausted either, so. Hi, this is Jim. Hi, Jim. This is Caleb. I'm just doing some research today, trying to figure out if, like, associates have ever hired, like, a coach, consultant, mentor to, like, help them in the professional, like, professional and personal lives at all. If, if anybody has? Like, if you have. Like, like, you personally, if you've ever um, hired one or thought about hiring one or anything like that? Mm, no, I mean, like, I feel like I have somebody sort of like that, but um, uh, I'm not interested, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm not here to sell you anything today. I'm just more trying to, like, get some insights and information to see if the market's even, like, interested in something like this because I don't have background in like real estate myself, but I do have background in like sales people and like say like just personal development. So I'm just trying to like see if this is something that associates brokers are even interested in like buying basically. Yeah, you know, for our particular company, I'll just, I mean, I'll, I'll just, do you know uh, Ninja Selling? I had another lady tell me about that today. Okay, so, you know, our company, I mean, we, we, we kind of use Ninja Selling and we have somebody that actually does, you know, fairly regular talks with us and we can even engage them directly for coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. So, you know, I would say, yeah, it absolutely happens, but there's a, you know, there's somebody that has a niche that we as our company really are, are focusing on already. Um, and so, you know, not to say that, you know, brokers can do whatever they want, you know, they're basically, you know, they're not technically independent contractors, but basically they're independent contractors. They can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Um, but we pay for a company to kind of provide that to our brokers already. Um, so say, you know, it'll be a, it would be a tough, a tough, uh, a tough situation to convince anybody to spend more money on a different setup. Yeah, because the money they use, I, I've talked with a couple of different brokerages as well too, and they have told me that it's like w through the brokerage and not f for the associates. So it's like you said, some are freelancers, but they aren't really. So it's like, it's a little bit of a, a double-edged sword, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. They pay, you know, so... Uh, you sell a million dollar house, right? Mm -hmm. um, and commission's going to be roughly $30,000. Out of that $30,000, the brokerage is going to take probably $9,000. We'll just call it somewhere around $9,000. Out of that $9,000, the brokers want to get something in return, right? And one of the things that they get in return is, um, is business coaching like ninja selling or something like that. You know, and that's, you know, that, so... So they're already paying for it to like in in a like not directly. They're not sure if they check directly, but they're sort of paying for it through the brokerage. Yeah, no, that makes sense because they're almost it's a, it's a part part of their commission that's going to that to have it paid for basically. Yep. Gotcha. Yep, exactly. So you almost might think it might be better than to go directly to the brokerage instead of the associates individually then. Maybe I mean for us, you yeah. Know, but we're, we're we're a unique brokerage. We offer a lot of services to our brokers. You know, we're, we're more supposed to work for, but we also provide a lot of uh, ancillary benefits like that. Okay, so that's why people want to come work for you guys instead of going to like yeah. your competitors or something like that. Right. 
you might be better off calling like Remax, um, you know, where they where they really don't have much structure or benefits like that. Awesome. Yeah, I'll I'll make a note of that, Jim, and I appreciate you sharing for me today. Um, just I guess the last sure. question is like the price point that you guys are typically like. Do you mind sharing that with me, or is that not something you can disclose? And if not, no worries. I just figured yeah. I'd ask. Yeah, it's something that I actually don't know, and I would disclose anyway. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I'm under the impression like the answer is no already, so I might as well ask. And if it's still a no, it was a no to begin with. So yeah. I right. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. Bye. -bye. I just want to get these last ones done. Camera's going to die again here, too, in a moment. But audio should still be good. Hello? Hi, is this um Kip Hard? I, I hope I said yes. that right. If not, I apologize for that. Um, name's Caleb. I was just reaching out to see if like associates have ever hired like a mentor, coach, or consultant to help them in like their professional and personal life at all. No, thank you though. Thank you. Not interested. Yeah, Thanks. no, I didn't have anything to sell. Just looking for some information to see if the market's even interested in this at all or not. Uh, okay. Bye. <laughs> oh, dude, we're almost done. Thank you for calling. We have multiple offices to serve you. To reach our headquarters, press <laughs> for our I'm not going to go to that one. That's fine. I know I could have, but let's go to the next one. Welcome. One moment while I locate someone to assist you. And Molly? Dude, it's been a good day. Made a couple of calls, got sent over some emails. We'll see what happens moving forward, but... Yeah. It's a great day. This is Shannon. How can I help you? Hi, Shannon. I was hoping to speak with Molly Morris, if I said her name right. Um, Maylee? Yeah, Maylee, yeah. Okay, and do you know, I am not familiar with what office she's in. Are, is she in Montrose or Junction? Um, it looks like Montrose. Okay, all right, perfect. I'm going to put you on a brief hold, and then I'll transfer you right over. Thank you. Yeah, have a great day. Yeah, you too. See, dude, I always like leaving people better off than I found them. I just do. So, but yeah. This is what 100 dials looks like in a day, 100 cold calls. I might have actually gone a little bit more than 100, but this is the work. This is the work. I'll just share it with you. Pitch has gotten a lot better. Say it over and over again. It becomes a lot better. What do we have? Okay. Oh, baby boy. Love you so much. Hi, is this um, Maylee? It's Emily. Emily. D the lady I was talking on the other line said Maylee, and I was like, I swear it's Emily, but it... Sorry about that. My name's Caleb. Um, I was just reaching out because I'm trying to figure out if associates have ever hired, like, a mentor for their, like, personal and professional life at all or not. Just doing some market research right now. Oh, I, I did for a small uh, time, yes. And did, was there anything in particular that stood out to you that made it, like, worthwhile to you? <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Um, so I'm, I'm like a freelancer. I'm an individual contractor. I'm starting my own like business, basically. So I'm just trying to see if this is something that people are even interested in. Because I've found a lot of help in like personal development, personal growth, like mindset, manifestation type of things. So I'm just trying to help other people grow yeah. their businesses, professional life. Because it's always nice having somebody from the, like, the outside come in and like take a little look at how everything is going. So I'm just trying to see if this is yeah. things people are even interested in. Um, in the first place. Yeah. Um, you know, my experience was okay. Um, it was a lot of money for 
a, like it just was a lot of money and it felt like it lasted a while and there was a time that I felt like maybe we were going to get somewhere, but we really didn't. And I don't even know the qualifications of the guy that I was visiting with. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do know a few other people in real estate that do it and have kept someone in their life like that for years. Mm-hmm. But over the majority of people, nobody wants to spend the money. Any reason? I mean, the majority of people that I've talked to, that you know, it's like, what do you think about this? And they all just kind of act like it's goofy, but... Yeah. I, I have to say, I experienced, like, like a, there was a, a section, like I said, that I felt like it was worth it. Mm-hmm. But then the overall, I just felt like, because I only got 30 minutes a week, and we talked, and I don't know. I just felt like it didn't really go anywhere. But I didn't feel like I got anything of substance, no meat, you know? Yeah, see, and that's what I'm trying to change because I'm like, people, they, they, it almost feels like they're just in it for, like, the dollar, and they aren't actually in it to see the other person, like, grow yep. and prosper. And I'm like, I don't like that. Yeah. So that's why, like, did they even give you any, like, could you text them or, like, ask them questions prior to, like, the meetings, or was it, like, 30 minutes was all you got? 30 minutes was all I got. See? If I needed anything, he he... You know, he was like, listen, I'm always here, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, especially when you're doing something over the phone. I mean, I'm old school. I'm not, you know, not really young. Um, I'm not real old, but it felt funny trying to get um, personal with someone over the phone that I had no idea about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there wasn't like a relationship. So it felt funky to just, you know, get personal with somebody. Yeah. But... It's almost like they weren't even open yeah, in the first place. Yeah. 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 There's some people out there that I don't believe should be coaches or therapists or any sort of like consultants or mentors. And yet they're out here doing it. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. So I'm like, I'm trying to change yeah. that and give like everything that I physically have for this person because I've done it for other people beforehand. They're like, my life has completely uh-huh. changed after like, just like one conversation with you. Like you changed my whole perspective on like the world entirely. And I'm like, awesome. Like I'm in it. I'm always been in it for the other person. That's why I'm like, if we need to meet more than one once a week, like if there's any questions or problems that you have coming up, I'm like, just give me a call. Like if I, if I don't answer right then and there, like maybe I'm in the middle of something, but I'll call you back on that same day to make sure that whatever problem it is, I get it solved right then and there. Mm -hmm. That's always been my approach to these types of things because it's also the rapport. Like if there's no relationship there, like it's almost hard to open up to people, but I've also had people open up to Mm -hmm. me and so many unique and incredible ways because I'm like, I'm here for you. Like, I want you to succeed. I don't care where my success comes from. Like I succeed when you succeed basically. And if I'm not doing my job, then I'm basically like, I'm not doing what I need to do and I need to find ways to like improve on that. So yeah, I I don't understand why some people do it the wrong way, but I'm trying to change that in the best way (laughs) that I can. So you don't have experiences like this anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, do you mind if I ask what the price point was for those 30 sessions? Oh, gosh. I wish I could remember. It, it, I mean, it was a long while back, so mm-hmm. I I honestly couldn't tell you. No worries. I, I figured I... I really... Yeah, no, I completely understand. I just figured I'd ask. And it was just over, like, a phone call, like, we're having right now. It wasn't even, like, a face, like, a video call or anything like that? No, no, just like what we're doing. That's so strange. If it would a video call make it better for you, or is that still like not personal enough? Oh, it probably would. I mean, it's nice to be somebody that you're talking to and still in your guts too. <laughs> <laughs> I could agree with that a hundred percent. Well, would you? Yeah. Would you be interested? I can send you a video of myself as well too. And like, if you ever think about changing or whatever it is, I'm. I'm always here for you if that is something that you're interested in doing, but I figure I'll just toss it out there. I, I know I said I'm doing market research, which I am, but I'm also like, if I feel like I can help somebody, I at least want to give the ask because the answer is going to be no regardless. Yeah. And it seems like you'd be somebody that I could be of service to, but I'd also don't want to push you to do anything that you don't want to do as well. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy to share your video with some of my colleagues. Um, I would do that What my helping kind of get your name out there. Where are you located? Right. 
Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I can send you an email with with like an actual clip of me, so you can be like, okay, this dude like is real, and he seems like he's a he's a okay. nice guy. Um, I would just need an email for that, okay. or I can text it to you. Either one works for me. Okay. Um. Uh, you can send it to. Awesome. Sweet Emily. Um. Yeah, and I apologize for you said seventeen, or seventy eight, seventy eight. 78, yeah. Gmail. Yeah, I've, I just want to try and imp help. Like, it's hard because it's like there's these people, they, people know what they need to do, but they don't do it. So it's kind of like, how do you persuade or influence or like help somebody realize that what they're doing isn't working? So that's why I'm like, I always try to take an individual approach to each person. And everybody has things that are a little bit different. So I can't really tailor something to the masses, but I can tailor something to you directly. But, okay. Yeah. So I'll send that on over to you, though, Emily, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Hey, you too. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Could have done something with that one as well, too, but decided not to. I mean, I got at least an email out of that, which is great. Okay. And do we have time for one more? We have two more. Two more left. Three hours of calling, I'm pretty sure. Sorry you didn't get to see any of that, but you got to hear it. At least. So. Your call has been forwarded. Last one. She was a good one. Um, that's crazy, though. I wish she would have known the price, but that's okay. All right. Uh, you've reached William Lord. Cool. So that is, if I do the math right, I think about 100. We might be at 102. 101 or 100, but that's basically what cold calling looks like. We got one meeting out of it. I got another email that seems at least interested, but I was also trying to do like market research today. So that was my whole, whole shtick, I guess. But it's also like, this is what you can do. Like I have no script. This is all off the top of my head. I just know how to talk with people and carry conversations, which most people I don't believe know how to do. So this is what you can do. Like if you're trying to start something, as I'm trying to start something right now and yeah, I can coach you as well, too, if you want, on how to at least make calls and stay consistent. If you made it to the end of the video, clearly that's something that you're interested in, so you might as well just book a call right now. And as you heard today, like we learned a lot, you can use these lessons as you want to, if you want to. With that being said, appreciate you sticking through. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. Learned a lot. Had some good conversations, too. But I'm going to eat some lunch. Edit this video, get it out for you. At least that's the plan for the play. Yeah, if you need anything else, just let me know.